Hey. 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 Ah. What's up? What's up? <laughs> oh, man. What's up, bro? How are you, my brother? I am doing well. This is Chris. And this is Oscar. And welcome to Lost in Comics. Comics. Yes. Yes. Lost in Comics. Issue 51. We made it over the 5 0. We thought about starting volume two. We're going to start volume two, episode one, but we're just going to keep with the legacy numbering system. So this is issue number 51. Woo! 51. And don't forget, y'all, uh, man, make sure you're telling your friends, your family, your whoever you got around you, make sure they like and subscribe to the channel. Uh, make sure they hit that bell notification so they stay current with everything we got going on for you guys. And uh, don't forget, uh, Instagram and Twitter is the place to find us for anything else you got going on, anything else you want to see on the show. Make sure you hit us up. Make sure we know what you got going on, and uh, and we'll be there for you guys as well. And, uh, man, we got a show, don't we, Chris? We got we a show. We got a show for you. So yeah. today, guys, if you did not know, which I don't know how you wouldn't know, we've been advertising this thing every day since last week, right? We have Jason, Sean, Alexander waiting in the green room right now. He's going to come on here, and we're gonna we're gonna pick his brain. He's he's uh, he's waiting, man. He's he's there. He's ready. Uh, we saw his face already, so this this thing is gonna happen. Uh, yep. We got uh, got a power minute for you. We had an excellent new comic book day yesterday. Probably one of my probably one of the best new comic book days of this year. I'm gonna say top yep. five. Yeah, I'm going to say top new comic book days this year. And we got the Lonson Comics family pick. And then we got a couple other things, bottom of the stack. Oh, we got a, a giveaway to do, right? We're going to put out some rules for that uh, lost mystery box. How has your week been? Man, it has been pretty, pretty good, man. Like I said, I've been, I've been super excited for trying to uh, prepare, uh, you know, my side of things and uh, being there for you for the stuff you got to prepare. And yes. I have just been super, super excited about this. I, I kind of feel like uh, when I think we can't do much better, we do much better. And, and I'm just super excited, man. I really, really am excited. So it's a it's a bucket list day for sure. And so how about you? How's your week been? Same, man. It's been, been a really busy week, but a good week. Um, happy to be here, of course. Lost in Comics Thursday is my favorite day of the week um yeah it's been a good it's been a good week it's been like i said busy but couldn't wait to get on here can't wait to talk to jason i do want to just say real quick guys uh, in the chat so you know uh today we're gonna we're gonna have this time with jason and sean alexander there is going to be a designated spot toward the end of the interview where we're just going to take uh, questions from the lost in comics family so we're gonna you know have some good questions ready and we will have put a, a few of those up here for jason to answer so uh, as we're going through this, just kind of be patient with us, but we will get to those questions toward the end. I know you guys can't wait. We can't wait. Can you wait? I don't know. Hello. We won't have to, I guess. <laughs> we won't have to, won't have to you wait. Want, you want to run down the chat real quick before we go, before we hit in, or what do you, what do you think? Yeah, you think? Good. I can't see anything, so just what you put up. One, okay. two. One, two. What's up? What is up? What is up? <laughs> Poser, he is tailgating. He's been here tailgating, waiting with his beer. Nine boxer nine. Hey everyone, I made it tonight. Boom. Robbie, what is going? You're early for one. You are early, man. <laughs> Spawners, man, we knew he was gonna be here. Spawners in the house. Adam, of course, Adam's got to be here. Dragon Ranger, all friends of the show here. Film Noir, 565 on time. Thank you so much, Nora. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. Boo leap. All right. All right. Very nice. Chris Evans in the house. We are doing well. Comic guy, Steve. Hola, mis amigos. What is up, Steve? Adam Grunder, the other Adam competing with Adam Janice. Todd is in the house from the Comic Burritos. What is up, Gomer? Who else we got here? Comics and Crosses. We got Mason. Thank you for not restarting at issue one. We thought about it. We did not. Mick. Mick, what is going on, my friend? Uh, Lots of people in the house, and we got more coming in. So, you ready to do this thing? I am super ready, bro. I ready as I'm ever gonna be. So, I hope you got your clean underwears on, and I uh, hope we're ready to rock and roll, baby. So, let's do this. Let's do it. What's up, Lost in Comics fam? Get your friends and family from Twitter and the gram. 
Because what we got for you today, you won't find anywhere else, see? This guy's art has the power to set your comic imaginations free. We have been given a gift contained in the pages we hold in our hands. Places of wonder and creepy, scary, nightmarish things, but before our eyes is where they land. You've seen his beautiful art in too many places to name, and you know you've seen it because his art will never leave you the same. No other artist will ever do. So without further ado, welcome to the show, Jason Sean Alexander. What's up? Wow. <laughs> that might be the coolest <laughs> intro I've ever gotten. <laughs> awesome. That's great. That, that is what we aim for, man. So welcome amazing. to Lockheed County. What's in it? <laughs> that was amazing. Awesome, awesome that, man. That, that makes us that makes us very happy here at Lost in Comics to know that you love that man because uh, we put in a lot of work for you and we're happy to have you man so for sure <laughs> happy to be here thanks like, what did I sign up for here <laughs> <laughs> so uh, again welcome to Lost in Comics Jason um, you know before we get started in doing all of our our questions for you getting into your career and stuff like that. Uh, we like to start the show off. Uh, we have a friend of the show. His name is Rafi the Flash. I don't know if you've heard of him, but uh, he's the fourth cousin of Barry Allen, and he comes on these interviews, and he brings some questions from some of the most brilliant scientists from Estrella Labs. I don't know if you know what that is, but uh, Estrella Labs is basically the Spanish version of Thor uh, Labs, right? And these, uh, <laughs> these are these questions. They're, they're developed to, true, to test the true essence of a creator like yourself, so uh, we bring him on. He's going to ask you these, and you just answer as quickly as possible the first thing that comes to your head. So welcome, Rappy the Flash. <laughs> What's up, Jason? Hey, it's nice to meet you, man. I've read some of your comic books, and I'm super excited about it. <laughs> <laughs> Real quick. Thank you. First, first answer that comes to your mind, okay? Uh, number one, uh, what is your favorite Rocky movie? Uh, oh wow! Um, it's been too many years. It's got uh, 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 uh got to be the first one. The first one. Hey, the original is yeah. always the best, right? Yeah. All right. A uh, question two. Blade runs into Jupiter in a dark alley. Who wins? Oh come on! <laughs> we can't. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll never diminish Blade. So, like, yeah. That's his job. <laughs> okay. um, so question three, I guess it it's, it's, uh, depends if you watch this or if you've ever watched Karate Kid or the new stuff that's on right now, but are you team Cobra Kai or Miyagi-Do? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm, I, I'm becoming Cobra Kai. I just started watching that show. <laughs> yeah, all right. Hey, that, that's that's cool. We love Cobra Kai too. So uh, <laughs> I didn't realize it was going to be as good as it is. Yeah. <laughs> it is. All right. Question four: You wake up as Spawn. What's the first thing you're doing? Oh, I was. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, you know, weeping, because technically that means my family would be gone. Yeah, beyond weeping, I genuinely would just try to find the highest building I could find to let the cape flow. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Good answer. Uh, um, if you could witness, if you could witness any event in history from the past, uh, what would it be? Any? <laughs> Anything that comes to your mind right now. That is significant. <laughs> well, you don't, you don't, uh, don't got to take it too deep. Just yeah, no, I'm like, I, I'm already like spiraling down this whole other <laughs> thing of like wasted answers and like all of mine are pitiful. <laughs> like, oh, you could have done this, but still. Uh, uh, oh, wow. Um, I gosh, I don't know. I I I'm, I do a his like. There's so much history in Philadelphia. Like my my brain is inundated with it. Uh, I can't change anything. So if the only thing I'm gonna do is like witness a thing. Um, uh, oh man. <laughs> nah, you know you know what? I'd like to maybe be in the room when uh, uh you know, uh, uh the guys uh, create Batman. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> So I come by a lot earlier and say like, no, he did nothing. 
All right, and that's a that's a great answer, man. Don't mean to put you on the spot with these, uh, uh, but like I said, I'm just thinking too much about. Your mind, but that's a great answer. Uh, so number six, uh, zombie apocalypse is upon you. What is your weapon of choice? Uh, weapons that are accessible to me, or weapon of choice? Weapon of choice, the thing that you would love to have in a zombie apocalypse. Oh my. Um, whatever the little rooftop Gatlin gunny thing is. <laughs> I want to have the, the gun from Predator part one where he just sits back and like, Oh that. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Perfect. Perfect. All right. We're, all, we're almost done. Two questions. Uh, question seven, if you could have any power, what would it be? Flight. Flight. I gotta be boring with everybody else, but flight would be amazing. <laughs> all right. And last but not least, who wins? In a foot race, the Flash or Superman? Well, the Flash better. Yeah. <laughs> because if not, what's the point of him? Exactly. I agree. I agree totally, man. Hey. If Superman's better at you than your one task, then why did someone invent you? Exactly. Like, you better be the best at that thing. So I'm going to say Flash just on merit alone. Like, All right, man. I love that answer. Hey, Jason, it was a blast, man. I hope you have a great time on the show today. And we'll catch you in the Speed Force. Later. Thank you, sir. <laughs> there you have it, Jason. Rappy though, was, Flash, man. That was fantastic. That was great. Man. Yeah, he's 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 good, man. He comes in and out very quickly, but uh, definitely some challenging questions. But you did great, man. You did great. Yeah, your background is is very fun to look at. Awesome, man. Yeah, I appreciate that. You know, <laughs> I I put everything in one little corner here and. Uh, yeah, I just keep stuffing it, and my wife, she, you know, I'm, I'm going to have to move out of my house pretty soon, so uh, <laughs> you know, just, wish me luck. With. <laughs> Too much stuff. Good stuff. So uh, before we before we get into all business, comic book talk, um, we'd like to get to know you a little bit more as an individual, Jason. Uh, I know you're a professional artist, but outside of arts, you know, what other responsibilities fill your time? I know you're, I know you're a family man. Tell us a little bit about that. Um. Yeah, mostly family. Like, uh, you know, my uh, days are, uh, especially for doing what we do, like they can be chaos. Uh, so I had to approach it with more of a business approach. And my day is actually chalked down uh, in groups of hours on where I'm supposed to be and what I'm supposed to be focusing on. Uh, so in one of those, you know, <laughs> in one of those final things is, uh, you know, family. And so I, just to make sure that like, and that's arranged that way so I know that no matter what I'm doing, I'm scheduled to do it and I can give 100% of myself when I'm doing it. Um, but yeah, family and then uh, I'm writing a bunch of uh, potential projects um, and that's about it for free time. Awesome, awesome. And so just uh, one child, two, two kids? Two kids. Uh, all right, all right. Yes, we had uh, we have a six year old little girl. We had our son last year, uh, December fourteenth. Um, yeah, so we got to uh, start all of this incredibly fun pandemic stuff <laughs> with uh, a newborn and having to move. Uh, so it's been a year. Yeah. Yeah, that, I, I can sympathize with you. My daughter, uh, she was born in March, uh, right when, you know, right wow. when started. Yeah, uh, so it was, it's, it's, it's been a year, man. You know, like you said, <laughs> it's been a year. Um, so, you know, but again, just like you, I'm, I'm just like, I'm sure you feel, man, my, my family, man, it's, it's everything. We got to spend some time here during the quarantine, just us, and it, it's been, you know, there's, there's some blessings in it for sure. Absolutely. Um, you know, um, like, I like to, we like to look at the positive side of things you know, around here. So you got to, uh, yeah. have to, man, have to, <laughs> that's all we can do. So, you know, I, I want to kind of go on a journey with you, Jason, uh, you know, starting, you know, with your career, uh, letting people kind of get to know you a little bit better and how you, how you came about, uh, how you got to where you are today. Um, so tell us like, where did the love for art begin? When was the first time you picked up a pencil or paint and said, Hey, I might be good at this art thing. Oh, wow. Um, my, my dad early on, um, was big into art 
and he was always drawing and sketching and he was, he was good. And it was, um, and I think that was the first time I got, you know, really in, into the idea of drawing just by seeing him make it. Uh, and then inevitably he's the one who kind of introduced me to like Renaissance art, at, you know, once I was a teenager and showed me all of those guys and that really started blowing my mind. But I was, I was always that kid uh, in the classroom, you know, that got asked to draw the thing on the, either the chalkboard or winning the art contests. And so there was always yeah. kind of naturally something there. Um, but then it took until I was, a, you know, in my around 16, 17 before I um, really uh, uh, discovered comics, really. <laughs> like, my brother had always been into them, but they were kind of boring. And, um, and then it was, you know, it was that guy right behind you. It was McFarlane that just, I, I had never seen anything like it. I was like, well, this is comics. This, this like, everything jumps off the page and it's incredible. I was like this. Um, yeah. And from that point forward, I was just like, I want to draw comics. Um, That's so incredible. Then, you know, next, the, the, the next actual step was then when I was 19, a few other artists and I started self-publishing an anthology. Whoa. So we got into the industry by like, by our own way, you know, we just, um, you know, Marvel and DC wasn't looking at me because at that point, uh, yeah. especially at that point, I'd kind of grown from McFarland to the goth stuff and then getting into things like the crow and stuff like that. And so, you know, I'm sitting here drawing, you know, robotic half women, you know, in the kind of James O'Barr ripoff style. And, I, you know, so, so I was like, we're going to have to self-publish this. <laughs> Nobody's going to take me. I like that, man. And there it went from that point forward. I love hearing about uh, an artist or, or any profession, like when your father is into that, that thing and then you kind of take after that. Um, I think we talked to Mike Diodato Jr. a few a couple months ago, and he had a very similar story. And, of course, he's had a, an illustrious career uh, in comics and in art. Uh, but he had a very similar story, and that's, that is – that I always am intrigued by that because, um, you know – to have a father have that type of passion and you follow the same footsteps. That's, that's amazing. My dad, my dad had, you know, he's, he didn't care about comics, about art, you know, <laughs> it was all about, you know, working outside and doing chores and, you know, so that, that's, that's awesome, man. Very, very cool. Thank um, you. I was always, I was always really thankful for that. Cause you know, even my yeah. studio partner and all that stuff, like they, they, you know, he grew up with the parents that are like, you know, cut it out, get a real job. You know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, That's I'm, a bit, <laughs> I'm a little bit like uh, Adam, a guy, a guy in our chat. Uh, my dad was great at drinking and beating my ass, so I really ah. do a whole lot of that other good stuff, man. But uh, I, hey, I still overcame. So, <laughs> but uh, that, yeah, that, that's a great story, though, man, for real. <laughs> I know you mentioned McFarland. Uh, is that your like? What, what's your earliest memory of just picking up a comic book? And was there a character or story that just really drew you into the comic medium? Well, uh, Wolverine was, you know, I was, I was at that age where I guess, you know, is why we see the comics we see now, but, you know, I was, you know, a late, you know, I was 16, 17 and, uh, um, 92 and 93. So, you know, I was at prime teenage years when all of the visual guys just exploded and my brain was just like, this is the best time in comics. Yeah. Uh, so I was, uh, but Wolverine, just as a character, uh, in and of himself, like the that that volume, that whatever the series was that you know Sylvester jumped on, and all those, you know, yeah. um, that series kept me going for a long time. Like the just uh, then, there's this wonderful, like I think somewhere between six to ten issue arc where where Busima is uh, penciling and Sinkai is inking it, and I was just like. Oh, you know, it was a great book. It really, uh, that one got me going. And then basically anything that Todd did after I discovered the Hulk. <laughs> it's amazing. And there's, you know, there's such a unique quality about your art, Jason, that, that I want to talk about for a moment. Like there's this uh, darkness, a heaviness. It's full of soul uh, and emotion. It kind of drips off the pages. Uh, and that and that comes off whether it's in the form of like a fine art painting or a comic book panel. Um, you've created this art style that can only be described as Jason Sean Alexander style. 
So, I mean, is this this style, did it come naturally to you or did you have to kind of hone your skills intentionally to create this type of style over time? Thank you. That was, that was, that was very kind. Um, truth, man. All truth. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, no, I think I, I, uh, I won't say wasted, but I spent a oh, way too many years uh, trying to consciously think of in terms of style, which as, as you know, we all love comic book guys because of their style. So the idea that you tell somebody like, oh, the best way is to not worry about a style, it seems insane. You know, you know, but inevitably, you know, it, it, it does have to come up. It does have to come through you. Otherwise, you're setting a ceiling for yourself because if you want to be like Todd style or Jim Lee style, that's great. Get as close to him as you can, but that's as far as you're ever going to get close to him. And then you're always yeah. going to be following number one. You never get, you're never going to get a chance to be number one if you're always following him and, and enjoying number two spot because someone recognizes it as similar as blah, blah, blah. Um, I did that for a lot of years. I, I, uh, I shared a studio with Kent Williams uh, for a good number of years. And then by the end of that, I could ape him like nobody's business. <laughs> um, I would also help him like on inking projects so I could earn a little extra cash and stuff like that. So I literally had the job of aping him. Uh, but inevitably, um, it's, you know, everybody has their own time. I genuinely started just seeing kind of a specific voice in my own work, probably about maybe only a few years ago. And I'm like, oh, this is what I do. <laughs> so, you know, so it did kind of spring up subconsciously, but I've always been a sponge. I'm always grabbing, you know, uh, uh, inspiration from film, inspiration from fine art, inspiration from comics. Like, I love, you know, de Kooning and Ty Twombly as much as I love Will Eisner and Todd McFarlane. You know, I, I, I love all of that. And so inevitably it all sits back here. And when it's time to draw and create, it kind of just funnels through <laughs> and then, yeah. you know, mix with a little, uh, you know, personal expression and experience, then it comes out and hopefully that all sounded really, you know, possibly pretentious, but actually, uh, actually I don't, I don't, I don't think it does. Cause like, um, when I hear art, art guys talk about their influences, I feel like it's a lot like music. Uh, I know Chris plays music, I play music, and sometimes yeah. I'll like just be messing around and without even thinking about it, like my influences, you know, like jazz yeah. influences or R and B influences, like they come out somewhere in 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 the in the chords and the tone and the sound, and so it does make perfect sense. You know what I mean? I mean, I'm not much of an yeah. artist, but. You if, know, it's, sure. if it's in here and you have it going in, it will it will come out. It will yeah. come out in whatever spits and spurts that complements whatever it is that you are trying to say. Yeah, you That's know. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, I know. I mean, most of everybody in the chat, uh, for the most part, is very familiar with your comic book art. But you also have done a lot of fine art that is hung up in art galleries around the world. Um, what, what kind of inspired you to blend these two different worlds together in your career, this fine art, uh, but also with comic book art? Like, how did, is that like a conscious decision you made? Like, you know what, I, I want to blend these two worlds and, and do both of them. Uh, yes, I'm at a certain age, though, that I can remember a time when uh, it was considered fine art and illustration, you know, none of the two, you know, it was kind of looked down upon in the fine art world uh, for doing illustration and having someone else kind of author the work, essentially. Um, and at some point, I I just quit giving a shit and um, wanted to because I think they're both incredible. Um, and then I so I started coming up with ideas to incorporate some comic book stuff in gallery shows. Uh, and my painting has always informed the comic work, which I which I really love because I, I I I feel like at least back in the day, a lot of artists would only really look at comics. Um, I think, like you said, like uh, uh, listening to music, reading books, watching movies, uh, uh, looking at other kinds of art, bring those things into comics because again, like, I go off on a parasol, but like comics are just a, they're they're a perfect visual storytelling medium. And they deserve all of the outside influences and to make them even great and even more unique. Um, I, and if I bring in more of one thing or the other, it's just because instead of trying to fit into a certain thing, 
I'm just trying to use every tool in my wheelhouse to, to make the most effective panels and, and art possible, which is the same thing I was doing in paintings. Like if it, I, my rule was like, you know, if it didn't, I call it the profanity factor uh, because mm -hmm. it doesn't matter how well educated you are and where you come from. If you see a large painting, you should, you know, you should just be like, Fuck. you know, it should get it out of you. And I want the yeah. same thing to happen in my comic work. I want the same thing to happen in my paintings. Like, if you walk by anything that I've drawn or painted and you're like, oh, that's nice, and you move on, I failed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I've, I've seen a lot of your work uh, and, and yeah. getting ready for this interview, looking at some of your, your fine artwork, and it definitely has that factor, that wow factor. I, I look yeah. at it, and I can't just pass it by and scroll right through it. I have to stop and, like, oh, my God, like, this is – incredible dude like thank you uh and and that's and that's coming from uh from a, a big comic book nerd right a big comic fan a uh, fan of comic book art but to see your other work i'm like dude this is i could stare at your at your stuff and just get lost in it oh, lost in comics <laughs> <laughs> so so you mentioned you mentioned empty zone a moment ago was that your first published work no we did a i self-published with the friends, uh, uh, an anthology called Section Eight. But then Empty Zone was one of the first short stories in that anthology. Uh, Empty Zone was then uh, picked up out of that anthology from a company called Serious Entertainment that was doing okay. a book at the time called Dawn uh, and Cry for you know, you know Joe Lindner's work and you know, um, Dawn and Poison okay. Elves and these kind of fantasy stuff. And so then I was their kind of sci-fi chick book, but you know, I, you know, it really kind of worked out because I'm not a, like their other guys did exquisite pinup style women when they drew them and I never did. And so they're like, you know, they, they would always get upset with me, but yeah. inevitably, so then Empty Zone lived with Sirius for a little while. And then I got on with help of my buddy, Mike Norton. Um, he got me, uh, he suggested me for Queen and Country for Oni Press. And then I did the arc with Greg of Queen and Country. And that, that was pretty much all she wrote. Dark Horse took notice from that point. And then uh, Mignola took notice. And then we started going with those, you know. That's awesome. So that kind of sprung forth this, you know, this well for you. And you fast forward, you do several books for various publishers, like you mentioned, including the big two, right? You've done books for for uh, both DC and Marvel, several yeah. indie publishers. Uh, then you get the opportunity to draw one of our favorite characters, Spawn, right? You, your art yeah. style yeah. blended perfectly to the Spawn universe, uh, like a match made in heaven or hell, right? In this particular <laughs> case. <laughs> uh, can, you, can you just tell us a little bit about that experience and how did Todd McFarlane approach you uh, to get on board? Uh, just tell us a little bit about that. Um, uh, yeah, it was, I mean, it was, it was spectacular. It came full circle. The first guy, the first guy I ever ate, you know, and, and now yeah. all of a sudden, you know, 20, 30 years later, I'm, you know, yeah. working with him on, you know, I was telling my wife, you know, it was just like when he started on Spider-Man, it was close to issue 300 and that helped skyrocket. And I get to meet Todd and I'm working with him on spawn just as it hit 300. And so I'm just like, this is awesome. <laughs> uh, but it, I mean, it, it's funny, inevitably, even though my career had definitely taken a, a turn, whether I was doing mostly fine art, and then I, I was just finishing up a book for Vertigo called uh, Frostbite. And, um, and I got an email. <laughs> it was Todd asking me if I wanted to draw a spawn. And I, I thought I was being pranked. And I was, <laughs> and I, I emailed back. I, I even said it out loud when I wrote. I was like, okay, <laughs> I want to draw a spawn. <laughs> and then he sent back another email back. There's like, oh, great. Thank you for taking the time. I'm thrilled. You know, if you want to talk on the phone, I'm like, who is fucking with me? <laughs> and, <laughs> and I'm like, and it's, it's like in this day we live in, nothing's private. So I'm like, here's my number. <laughs> and then the next day I get a call. And it's from Arizona. And I'm like, somebody told me he's in Arizona. Wow. No. And I didn't answer it. <laughs> I, I was like, no, no. And so then I listened to the voicemail. And I swear to God, man, it still didn't make sense to me. Because man. he has a, he's so personable. 
even on his voicemail, he was already talking to me like he's known me forever. Yeah. And that's what threw me. I'm like, this can't be somebody I'm, no. This isn't like Todd McFarlane. Because like the first thing, that, I'll never forget, the first thing on his voicemail it says like, hey, I'm looking for Jason Stud Alexander. I need somebody <laughs> to help show me how to draw a little, like, blah, blah, blah. I was like, yeah, Damn. who's fucking with me? <laughs> so, <laughs> I finally call him back and I realized like, you know, five minutes in, I'm like, I'm talking to Todd. This is real. Oh. None of it made sense, but you know, he's a, a believer in empty zone and, and or, uh, he's a believer in image. And he found me, he found empty zone, you know, and said, this guy, let's give him a go. Wow. And um, I was such a, a fan that the, the deal was for the first, was for a six issue arc. And um, I, and it was so, so funny. I didn't, I couldn't even stop myself. I was just so full of, uh, of shit when we were talking on the phone. Uh, Cause he, I was like, that's awesome. I was like, can I write it? And he was like, oh, you want to write it too? I was like, yeah, if I can. And he was like, all right, let's see what you got. And I was like, cool. Can I color it? And he's like, oh, you're a man of all talents. He was like, you know, yeah, if you want to color it, go ahead. And I got off the phone and I told my wife, I was like, I got to buy and sit and learn how to color. <laughs> I have never digitally colored anything in my life. <laughs> so, so then I spent the next two months learning how to try to do it. And I colored, I think the first three issues. And then I was like, that's, that's insane. I'm not doing that anymore. Uh, that's an awesome story though. I love that. Man. That's, that's <laughs> I was just seeing what all I could accrue. And I co-wrote it with my, uh, the co-writer I had on volume two of MD zone, Dara Savage. We, we co-wrote six issues. And then I just, I was into it. I saw issue 300 coming like 12 issues down and I had never stayed on a series that long in my life. And I was like, you know what though, it's time to make a long-term plan. Uh, the one thing I would be, I would do uh, when I was doing panels with guys like Sienkiewicz and Dave McKeon and those guys is they could sit back and then say like, oh yeah, Bill Sienkiewicz, you know, I'm, I'm the guy that was on Electra Assassin and, and New Mutants. And I didn't have um, a body. You know, I didn't have this body of work that I could say, oh, yeah, for two years I was on a thing. So I decided to do two years on a thing. <laughs> so so it was, it was, the 300 was great, but it was predominantly, I had made a choice to put fine art on hold because I realized I was at a point in my career and life where I kind of had to pick one. Um, giving 50% to one and 50% with the other was giving me, you know, 50% results. And yeah. so I was like, all right, the gallery, I'll hold off on the gallery stuff because I can't leave comics where I'm at. I want to, I want to make some shit. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, and so that was, that was really one of the biggest decisions was to stay on a book for a long amount of time to have a full body of work and have people see my name on the stands every month. Um, just, you know, if they, for lack of a better phrase, especially for, for being a hillbilly, it was, you know, time to, you know, shit or get off the pot. <laughs> um, yeah, well, while, while we're on the subject of Spawn, I just wanted to say, I, I've been on Spawn, me and Chris have been on Spawn, uh, I've always loved Spawn, uh, but when you jumped on it, uh, for me, it, it made me love the character even more. The art, the art really did pull me deeper into the book. Uh, Thank you. I, I really, I really, like, I couldn't believe, like, how good it was, you know, and, uh, and after that, and then of course we're gonna get to Philadelphia. I mean, oh my God, you know that that blew my mind as well. But many times, me and Chris talk about older books from the past, and no disrespect to those artists, but there's like books that we talk about, uh, like Swamp Thing, for instance. When you know, if I think who could I who could I put on that book, for instance, uh, I, I think of you as well because I, I feel like your your style, your art would be beautiful on like a Swamp Thing type book, man. So anyway, I just want to say those things before we, before we get too far along, you know, but uh, Not at all. you know, huge fan, man. So <laughs> of the work, man. So, so you do these, uh, you did two years consecutive issues with Spawn. Um, I guess leading up to that 300, I know we, we watched the documentary, the Todd McFarland documentary. Um, what was it? I forget. What's it? What's it? Do you remember the title, Oscar? To, some, to hell or? <laughs> oh, like hell I won't. <laughs> like hell I won't. Yeah, like hell I won't. Like yeah. Will, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, I imagine, you know, behind the scenes, you're back there drawing also. Uh, like, I guess, what were those moments like leading up to issue 300? I mean, it's, it's a historic moment. And that, 
not just for Todd and, and Spawn, but just comics. Like it's the longest running independent title in the history of comics. And like, what, what is, what, what is that like, man? Like, it was incredible. I, I got to, I, I got to kind of fall in love with Todd on like all these other levels other than being a fan. I, I got to see and got and 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 still have these uh, conversations, you know, about entrepreneurship and 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 the industry and things like that. Like, you know, he showed, uh, you know, he showed that you can be a, a a business mogul and and you can get rich making comics. You know, like you may need to, you know, you know, especially even today, like the industry is obviously different. You're, you're not going to see like maybe those image numbers of sales of comics. But it, it has shifted where like there's other media that your comic can then play around in, like whether it's animation or film or whether it's other things. Uh, you know, he just he showed me. I, I kind of got this constant inspiration of what's possible beyond like I just want to be the best artist I can be. Like he showed me like, oh, you could be the best artist and you can be incredibly successful and still have your family love you and still be fit and still be, I was like, what are you? <laughs> so, uh, and so, yeah, it's a, it was kind of a, an inspiration on, on a different level than I expected. And then just as a fan building up to 300, I was, I was proud to be a part of it. It was uh, and all the artwork leading up to it, like, you know, he kept just coming up with like Christmas presents for me, you know, you know, as far as being a fan goes, he's like, Hey, we're going to bring back all the villains. You're just going to bring them back and redesign them as zombies. I'm like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. you know, and, and I got to do everybody, but then for whatever reason, the one that stuck was the freak. And I just, I, I enjoyed drawing that character more than anything. Um, he was very, he always he would look at me in these kind of weird ways because I the stuff I added I was like cool can I give the freak a little doll and he's like sure I was like can the doll be a made with a baby skull and he was like sure I was like can he be plucking the teeth out just for shits and giggles <laughs> and he just at that point he just quits answering emails um, <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's exactly what he's doing when we first meet the freak and I was just like uh, you know the because there's also this level of freedom. Yeah. You know, Todd sends you a page, a written page that describes the issue. <laughs> and then I draw it. Like, I, that was, um, you know, there's, you know, no layouts, no corrections. Like, it's just like, here's the pages. If you want changes, let me know. That's awesome. I mean, and that's, that's an incredible amount of freedom, but also it shows an incredible amount of trust in your skill from Todd, man. So that's that's such a... I oh, can't even imagine, you. you know, how how honored you must feel for that. I mean, we're we're huge McFarland fans, obviously. I mean, who isn't, right? <laughs> but um, but uh, I know right now you you're not currently on Spawn, but do you think we'll see you in any future issues with Spawn? Oh, yeah, I've I've already we've already talked a little bit here and there about uh, yes. if not if not a part of the series, I I've, I've kind of been talking about uh. A mini series off the side, so it doesn't necessarily have to worry about canon or any of that yeah. stuff. You know, that uh, cool. so love it. Yeah, it would be fun. I told, I, I've already kind of given him an idea and said it would be fun to actually get to write and draw one like this. And you know, we're talking. Man. <laughs> excited, man! Excited. Let's let's switch gears a little bit. Let's talk about about the book that could very well be the best book of 2020. In our humble opinion, you know, quite best, uh, possibly the best creative team of 2020, in our opinion. Everybody oh, knows yeah. what I'm talking about. You know, Philadelphia. We talked to Rodney earlier this year. He said that you didn't take his first pitch for Philadelphia. Is is that true, man? <laughs> I don't think I took. I don't think I took a, the first three or four pitches for Philadelphia. <laughs> oh, uh, we were a different. We were in very different places. He was looking to get into comics, and he was very excited. And at that point, I didn't know where I was in comics anymore. And I was just like, I don't know. If I'm gonna, you know, do something else like this. And um, yeah, so it was it was kind of back and forth. And I remember I would listen to this, and like one vampires for me were never a draw ever. Wow. Um, and then uh, and I would listen to it and I'm like, yeah, yeah, you're right. You know, it really does come down to like how it's written and things like that. And then we'd be sitting at dinner and talking and talking. And then he was like, and then the founding fathers and 
<laughs> it's Carl Adams. And at that point, just I would be at dinner, but I know subconsciously it just went like, okay, click. And so we would just have the rest of it. And I'm just like, like now it just got silly sounding. And uh, and then he would he brought it up again, and I was like, All right, look, I, I gotta tell you, it does lose me when you mention the founding fathers. Can you explain that to me a little <laughs> bit more? And and it had nothing to do with Rodney. It had every bit to do with the fact that like I was just listening, and then I would shut it off. And then finally <laughs> he explained it, and I was just like, that's fucked up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So finally, it was the right time. It was the right moment where I would finally be open to, you know, entertaining it. And then uh, I would look at the first script and I was I was like, OK, wow, this is because he gave me, you know, uh, when he explained the Founding Fathers thing and I understood it, I was like, OK, this is this is kind of cool. And then he gave me my, my favorite pitch line ever, which was, look, it's going to be Hamilton meets Dracula, meets Sanford and Son. And I was like, done. <laughs> done, done, done. Um, and the first awesome. issue delivered on all three. And so I was, I was, I was good. That's uh, cool to hear your perspective, man, of this story. Cause I mean, you, you tell it almost exactly like Rodney, just from your perspective. It's, 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 <laughs> uh, it did, it took me a long way to come back around and especially coming off of like, Oh, I have you know a family and children and a, and a monthly spawn paycheck. <laughs> I should stop that, right? And I'm like, okay, um, but I did because you know, for for lack of I don't know if it's lack of a better phrase, but I believe it because I was just, you know, uh, you know, we all get self conscious and nervous when we turn something in or like, does this suck? Did I not do my best thing and that kind of a thing? Uh, and he would constantly kind of ask me is like is this good is this really good is this gonna whatever is this gonna happen and i told him like i'm only here because it's good like this thing i believe in it i'm a hundred percent here like you know everything else will come but god damn it's a good it's a good story and um getting to make these characters man it's just it's been this has been a whole big growing experience and it's like you know subject matter like basically turning something that trying to show something new <laughs> in vampires of all things <laughs> um but even without something new uh and if you can't find something new you know find something personal and i think rodney has found like both elements that you know to sprinkle yeah. throughout we both added our own little like um i feel like we added things that don't you know that aren't very consistent in vampire lore and that I think mm -hmm. Philadelphia has specific to it. And so that part's kind of fun too. That's, uh, I totally, totally agree with all of that, man. Like, and, and there is a, I mean, there's, there's a ton of stories out there, man. We've comics have been around for so long um, to be able to make something unique in this day and age. I mean, it's, it's so rare, um, but yeah. that's what the, this book is. It, it's why it's so special. You've captured that exactly what you said. There's a unique style of writing. Um, because he uh rodney's not your traditional comic book writer you know he he was more geared toward tv and movies uh, and you can you can see that but it, it's special you mix that in with your art and you got something completely different um and it's why i think that's why it's been received so well it's like people are wanting something fresh want something new uh and that's what philadelphia has provided and especially like the vampire uh, genre it's like i mean what what new thing can you do with that you guys have done that um so absolutely hats off man kudos thank you i um thank you I, I i've told him a couple of times like there's certain elements that i i still like i'm enjoying the gore like i i like those moments when there's gore that happens like i, I get to pull out all this like i wanted to be a special effects artist before i discovered comics and so like i get to kind of do that on being the most disgusting i can do to make everything you know just really awful um but the uh uh i'm gonna lose my train of thought now because i got i saw a little thing pop up on the screen that lost my I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> should we answer things from people we we we're gonna have just a little bit of a moment here to answer some questions in just a few minutes um oh dope i want to come back to that one in a minute so kind of save that one 
Sure. Uh, um, oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, um, <laughs> the, uh, one of the one of the more visually disturbing, like you say, was it the gore? One of the more visually disturbing things is that um, I designed their I designed the look of their eyes, and it's I love no matter if Jimmy is talking to his dad or whether somebody's having an emotive or whether it's two sisters talking, you know, Brittany and whatever, like, like you want to, you want to like, you want to just feel it. You just want to have like this emotive response. And then like, you know, the camera turns over and like the sad girl has like the reversed eyes and she's crying blood. And I'm like, even the, the emotional, very personal aspects of the story are still fucking disturbing because, you know, of all the things crying that you want to feel for, it's kind of a monster. Uh, and he's added these elements of, I've never, I've never once I don't think seen or considered what happens to a vampire when they're in their coffin, minus they're sleeping. Uh, mm-hmm. And I think this whole other world uh, that, you know, people yeah. get gone to, like an issue, I'm making sure I didn't lose it. Yeah, issue eight. Yeah. Okay. Whew. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah, there's a whole other connection to the afterlife that these guys, these guys, vampires can reach. And so even just in genre of vampire lore, I think it has unique things, you know, that, that don't really exist in other books. Absolutely, man. Uh, so after you said yes to Rodney, and you began working on Philadelphia, what, what was your approach to drawing it? Like, did, did you have a vision pretty early on as to what this world was going to look like? Is it just something that developed? I I knew I I it started off because I feel like it's a little different now as far as the vision of it for it. Uh, but it started off as I wanted to just approach this thing as cinematic and for lack, again for lack of a better word as legit as possible. Mm-hmm. Like oh you know even cartoony stuff is legit, so it's a wrong word. I wanted it to be my best stuff and to make it believable. No, no, no. Yeah. I wanted to find a way to make it as believable as I could and to make it as emotive when there was actual things happening, you know, I, I wanted them to, to feel or to laugh. Um, and honestly, that was the approach artistically. And so at that point before pandemic, you know, I, I shoot models and uh, for reference and all of that. And so I just to make it as human and grounded and personal as possible. That's awesome, man. Uh, I mean, I, I've seen you interact with, with Rodney on your own YouTube channel. If everybody didn't know, Jason has a YouTube channel. So there you go, a little promotion for you there. Um, but it, it seems like you guys have such a great relationship and, it's, and a mutual respect for one another. Um, when I look at Philadelphia, the work, it looks so cohesive, like like the art and the writing could be from one person. If you didn't know better, you'd think, man, maybe it's the same person drawing and writing because it's so cohesive. Um, do you attribute that to the relationship that you and Rodney have developed uh, over time? No. Um. <laughs> <laughs> not, not in the least. Uh, um, no. Uh, it's so funny. Like Rodney and I, we we can be a little funny sometimes. We tend to either butt heads or fall in love with each other on any given day. And, um, uh, 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 but when it comes to work, uh, and I think that's the thing that always brings us together, that keeps us going, that keeps us whatever, because we work with a very like mind. We work with a very similar aesthetic. And so on that side of things, I've definitely found, you know, a brother in him as far as like comic creating and like, when I see, when I read his words, um, my, my first response is like, that's fantastic. And my second response is like, how do I get that across? Like, how do I, like what the most, imp- so I just, I just want, I love these scripts. And so most of the time I find that my, my biggest goal throughout the whole thing is just making those words sing as much as possible visually. Mm. Um, and so, yeah, and, and, but we have, um, but when it comes to work, yeah, we just, you know, when it comes to Philadelphia and the story and, and all of that, you know, very few, you know, if, if any budding heads, like, awesome. you know, yeah. we can scrap over here, but as soon as the Philadelphia bell rings, we're like, zip, <laughs> let's get it done. 
It seems like you guys have like similar work ethics and probably is why you did so well with Todd. I mean, you, you guys are driven, you got, you have a goal and you're accomplishing the goal. So that's awesome, dude. Um, here, here's just like a little side question, just a little geek out question. But in, in uh, issue eight of Philadelphia, uh, there's that the scene with the X-Files where you got Mulder and Scully. I mean, and they don't refer, there's no like, you know, Mulder Scully referenced in there, but you, but you know who it is, right? Is that, who, whose idea was that? Was that you, Rodney, or culmination? Uh, Rodney. Uh, Rodney first uh, wanted to put little homages and cameos to people that he loves in there. And then, you know, I started, you know, we started kind of get, coming up with a list. Um, it's so funny. I was just about to tell you about a very subtle one, but that issue comes out next week. So, um, <laughs> Okay. Yeah. There's that, another I, subtle I, one in, in issue 10. I can't wait to see it, dude. Cause yeah, that, 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 I don't know what it, I mean, the book is incredible, but then you get these little, uh, homages like this, like the Mulder Scully thing. I was just like, Oh dude, like, you're kidding me. Like, it's just, I'm like, I don't know. Like I want to like hold the book and just like, just, like, <laughs> like, I'm like how can this get any better? Like, and I'm like, I'm a uh, huge Eskimos fan dude. So. Oh, same, same. And so, so was Rodney. Like it just, you know, all of that monster of the week stuff was just brilliant. And the, yeah, I mean, uh, the second arc, I think like if there is a real, like there's a certain level of comfort we have. And so we're kind of playing more, like you'll even like, whether it's, you know, in the story and you see the cameos that he writes or you, you know, in the artwork, things are definitely get more insane. And like, and it's, it's kind of fun, you know, I'm really proud of that first volume. And then it feels like, you know, we kind of earned a little bit of, of cred here. And so now we get to kind of go out and uh, and really just try. I want to just scare some people with this stuff. Like, <laughs> you know, I, I, I tweeted it the other day, but let me tell you, from issue 10 to 12, it just starts this momentum that just doesn't stop. It's, it's you know, I get to read the scripts and I'm like, I'm just, I'm a fan. Um, yeah. So like I said, every time I read a script, I get excited. And then I just got to figure out how I'm supposed to make that work. It's awesome, dude. Yeah, I mean, we, we're obviously we're fans, man. That's, and the, it's already, it already feels like that type of comic. Like we're just going up and up. And to hear you say it, oh, man, I just, I can't wait for, for the next few issues. But I, And I have, I have to pat myself and Oscar on the back just a little bit because we, we love this book from issue one. Uh, when it was released... We couldn't say enough about the writing and the arts. Uh, we kept preaching to people that this book was different. It's unique. Uh, what you brought to the table with vampires and the blood splattered pages uh, to see so many people fall in love with this book throughout the year. It's, it's been amazing to watch. Um, and you guys, I'm sure you're aware, but you have your own Philadelphia fan club page that people have. <laughs> yeah. and, um, and those are some friends of ours on Twitter. It's awesome to see that. Um, how do you feel about the response that you guys have got for Philadelphia this year? Oh, every bit of that part is is humbling. Is is it is probably actually the right word. Um, it's it's very humbling. I, um, uh, my my wife has had to train me in the art of saying thank you. As opposed to like, like oh no, guy, guy, look at something else. And like so, um, so it's been it, man. It's been wonderful. It's, it's been really wonderful. Uh, I love that people are finding it. I love that people are liking it. Um, it's uh, you know I like the you know, when the reviews come in. I, I I get all excited. Like you know, like I said, I believe in the book, and so when I see other people jumping on, I get really you know. I'm excited because I wanted to just grow and grow and grow, but um, yeah, the, the the growing readership has been amazing to see, and everybody's interaction on Twitter has just been really cool. I just I love it. You guys, are, uh, you guys, and you guys, and, and helping push us and all of that stuff. Like any, you know, this is this has been this has been really really cool. I was. Uh, you know, one of the things I was nervous about, I told Rodney, I was like, yes, but you know, this is a great book, but neither of us are famous, famous. <laughs> so, so I'm like, this might be a, an uphill thing for a little while to kind of grow, you know, get people to see it, you know. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm in, you know, 
I'm invested. He's invested. So I'm like, let's let's keep making it until the rest of everybody else wake up and figure it out. Uh, I'll keep buying yeah. it too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we're, we're going to keep we're going to keep talking about it. Um, so let's take let's take a quick uh, few questions from the chat here, uh, Oscar. Any? Let me look. Let me go back and look real quick. See if it hasn't uh, gone away from the. When does it go? They disappear. So give me one second here. Let me look for these questions. Yeah, no problem. Here's one. Whose idea was it to add Nirvana? Michael Jordan, Yeah. Uh, you you can't say it's you know 1991 without putting those two posters up. <laughs> That's <Yeah>. true. <laughs> um, I can't. I I want to say it was genuinely in the script. I want to say Rodney nailed both of those. If not, I would have. I don't think I, yeah, honestly, I don't, I don't know if I contributed other than doing them. I don't think I, like, I think that was Rodney, like, you know, the guy who knows how to set a scene. Uh, like, Gosh, just... You see, have a specific all time favorite panel spread from any comic you've done. Ooh. Hmm. I just off the top of my head because it's it it was my favorite up until probably probably if I go in the flat files and look, but um, <laughs> issue five of Empty Zone Volume One uh, mm -hmm. at the end when she is essentially saying sayonara to her dead ex uh, lover. Okay. Like the, I was I I still haven't sold those pages. I I won't like I really like that sequence like. If, if there could be a sequence that says, why did Jason get into comics? It would be a mechanical girl talking to a ghost and everything being emotional. Boom. That's what I do. <laughs> Cyberpunk horror and emotions. My question, what is the most difficult part about being an artist and what is the most rewarding part about it? The most difficult part I'm finding not about necessarily being an artist, but being an illustrator. Mm. Uh, and especially being a comic book illustrator is the it sometimes gets impatient and exhaust and, and infuriating with um, mm. the, the the amount of uh, uh, labor and hours it takes to do our work. Like it's one of those where I have a million stories in my head and I know probably I'll get to five, you know, mm. um, yeah. that I draw. Uh, and so, you know, part of me, you know, and I have friends that jump around, like, you know, I'm working on this, I'm working on this, I'm working on this. And I was like, Oh, I'm on issue 12 of that same thing I'm doing. But that's what we have to do. Like, as artists, our job is to build the buildings, you know, like, and so I'm trying to, you know, so that part is, it's a little exhausting, because you want to be doing all of the projects. You know, I didn't right. want to have to say, I didn't want to have to say no to Hellblazer. You know, I didn't mm. want to have to say no to Moon Knight. You know, I had to say no to, you know, just because I have a thing, you know, and I'm, I'm doing it, you know. Um, so that part yeah. is hard. Now, it's a little bit of FOMO. <laughs> like, now, I'm, now I'm upset that we're not getting a Hellblazer from Jason Sean Alexander. <laughs> uh, blame Todd. Uh, blame yeah. Todd. He, he literally asked me on and I signed the paperwork the day before I got contacted from DC. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, I'm going to go draw Spawn for a little while. Um, uh, but, uh, we got, we got spawn. yeah, but that said, honestly, completion, as far as the opposite end of the spectrum, uh, you know, once yeah. that, once that issue is out, once that page is done, once that book is out, having, uh, having a volume, especially a trade, like having a, a volume of your workout is one of the most rewarding things that, you know, looking up on a shelf and seeing like, you know, spines and spines of books that I'm in like that is one of the more rewarding parts that you get to make uh as good as comic good as comics as you can make <laughs> you know i love making yeah. these things i love the medium i love every every part of it so i'm thankful every day i get to draw comics can you put that one from todd uh, re, uh that you the, from a moment ago oscar no we don't miss that one and then did having to learn to work with your left hand teach you anything new about your art 
Uh, Tommy, I'm a little stiff sometimes. <laughs> um, I will sometimes now uh, pencil certain panels or pages with my left hand because it doesn't know any better. So it, it's a little looser and a little bit more energetic. And then I'll, when I ink with my right, I tend to try to stay with the drawing that I did instead of correct it. Um, yeah, uh, drawing with my left told me, you know, helped me learn to loosen up. Okay, let's take two more questions. Ask you, so let's see, uh, I've never seen tears drawn like you do in Philadelphia. Is that something easy for you or does it take conscious effort? Oh my mm. God, thank you, conscious effort. Uh, Cool. You know, first, you know, I wanted, I wanted much like, much like blood. I, uh, I didn't want to just draw it. I wanted to, you know, especially since I've gone digitally, I can add these other layers and, and honestly, I'll just, I'll work. I'll like put the line, erase the line, put the line, erase the line until I can get a subtle, but very convincing, you know, tear or something like, you know, those are those moments you only have a couple of other than that, we're going to see some action and some fun stuff. So I want to keep the reader there as much as possible. So very conscious. Beautiful. Here's one. Is that, is that so much a question, but a statement from Chris Evans? He just wants to say he loves your work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You, Chris. <laughs> you, got, you got one more question up there, Oscar? One more. We got this one here. Okay. Uh, uh, who, came with, who came up with Jupiter? The idea behind his twisted mask. Um. Rodney came up with Jupiter being a vampire. Thomas Jefferson came up with the idea of owning Jupiter as a slave and making him wear shitty slave halos that I did not create. That's just yeah. American goddamn history. That's just... <laughs> those, like, when Rodney explained to me what a halo was, I was like, yeah. Like... Let me be right for a second and Google this and see that, <laughs> holy shit, the horrors that they created and invented people to wear and to make their lives uh, more miserable were simply atrocious. See, comics don't rot your brain. Comics, like I'm getting more and more history lessons throughout, you know, through Philadelphia and, uh, and learning all of this stuff. Uh, and so, no, Jupiter is very real. He was Thomas Jefferson's uh, childhood friend. Um, I don't know how much more accurate it gets beyond that, you know, vampire stuff like that. But the uh, the halo and the masks are real. As a matter of fact, the, they did a lot more. I just needed him to be able to move more effectively. Um, so yeah, the cool vampire part is Rodney, and the disgusting part is you know, America, uh, human beings. Yeah, uh, J Jupiter happens to be my my absolute favorite character so far. I love 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 Jupiter. Um, and that is kind of crazy, though. You mentioned that about the about the halos. You know that uh, it wasn't made up in some, you know, horror comic book. It was, it was made yeah. from our horror you know, of, of of the world. You know, so that 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 uh, that's a nice little egg. I think that's a nice little throw in there in the in the story in the comic book, man. So that's awesome. We we try to like at least ground it, ground some like fun in this book to ground uh, so much of the stuff in history. Uh, anything that's going to make vampires seem more believable, you know, it's it's, it's mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Jason, oh I gotta wait till issue eleven for Jupiter or uh, <laughs> issue ten for Jupiter. Oh my god! <laughs> um, I know you are. I know we've taken about an hour of your time. And are there any upcoming projects that you that you can tell us about or that you want to tell us about? Uh, there's a few that I can't tell you about. Mm -hmm. um, and a few of those are also with Mr. Barnes. Um, one of the things that's just really fun. So we're getting excited because um, we're, we're we have issue. We're, we're we're currently working on issue twelve. So that's the you know finale of the season, as it were. And then we take a few months break. Um, this is going to be amazing. Issue twelve is going to be the best goddamn finale I think mm -hmm. I could hope for. I, um, mm -hmm. I'm drawing it now. We have Bill Cabbage on one of the variants. We have Todd McFarlane on one of the variants. Wow. Uh, and just so you guys, uh, we haven't <laughs> released it yet, um, but Elysium Gardens, which is our black and white backup story in Philadelphia, uh, because, because I missed a chapter, uh, <laughs> issue 12 will have 10 pages of Elysium Gardens, yes. written by Rodney, penciled by me, and inked by Bill Cabbage. 
Uh, um, yeah, hey, we, we need it now. I don't know if I can wait. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Just email us the, uh, the PDF so we can just for our eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I'm so excited. I, uh, I, yeah. So I'm literally turning in pages to uh, Bill right now. Um, and, I, you know, the images for the covers are incredible. So it's just, I, I couldn't be happier. Like the last 10 issues of this, or the last three issues of this arc, you know, issue 10 comes out next week. Uh, and guys, from that point forward, it gets nuts. Like mm. I've, I haven't been like excited, excited since like maybe Spawn 300, like something that really got me like, this is gonna blow the fans away. Like yeah. I'm, you know, even if I wasn't drawing the thing, I just can't, I, I want people to read this. It's gonna be so good. I'm, I'm really excited about it. Amazing, amazing. If you can't tell. Man, we're excited. We're excited too, man. And 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 uh, so whenever we whenever we bring an artist on here, we do like to uh, we Oscar and I get inspired to do a little drawing. Um, so we just want to show you this. Just tell us, are we on the right track? How are we? How's our art style, man? Uh, Oscar, why don't you show them? Start it off. You show them who's who and what's what here, man. So so this will be this is uh, the original spawn. This is uh, Chris's uh, point of reference, and then this is. Chris's actual drawing there. So <laughs> I could tell by your silence you really love it, right? <laughs> and then, oh, and then this, is, this is my spawn reference, and then this is my spawn drawing. The beauty of our drawings has got you speechless, right? It's incredible. Oh, it's incredible. I've literally <laughs> never seen anything like it. <laughs> so, You're on so, the wrong so, Where are you meet? I mean, what do you oh, think, man? Like maybe like special variants for a spawn like 350 or something? What do you think? That would be dope. <laughs> 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 I'll talk to Todd. Oh, oh my God. dude. He doesn't oh. know what to say, but, um, <laughs> right, right, Jason, um, anytime we have a guest in here, we put you guys on our Hall of Fame. So let's show them, let's show them that, Oscar. Um, you are, oh. where is he? Let's see. Yeah, right in the center. Right in the center, man. Right under, right under Rodney, man. So <laughs> you are, Planted on our Hall of Fame, um, I think, <laughs> awesome. I think it, goes, it goes without saying, dude, that we are huge fans, Jason. And this is, you know, we're, we're trying to hold it together here, but this is a huge geek out moment for us, man. We're just guys that love comic books, and we uh, we love your work, dude. And we and same for Rodney. Um, and it's not just your Philadelphia. I mean, everything you've done. I, I talked about your art style. It, it's incredible. It's truly an honor, a pleasure to have had you on this issue uh, of Lost in Comics, and, and I can't say thank you enough for taking some time to, to hang out with just a couple of normal dudes out here, man. Ah, thank you. Thanks for asking me, man. This is great. You guys are awesome. Yeah. And the same for me, uh, Jason, man, you know, from Lost in Comics, man, where we, like I said, when we brought you on before, I was super nervous, uh, but you have been, uh, your personality is great, man. You, you're you very, very humble and easy to talk to, which made things really good. And awesome. we wish you the best. And uh, we have some things going on for the end of the year in, in Lost in Comics. Uh, we wish you the best. And uh, wink, wink, maybe. Hopefully, we can have you and Rodney Rodney on in the in the new year with some stuff we got going on, man. But uh, yeah, we look forward to all you're doing, man. And me and Chris really, really love your work as well, man. So thanks, man. Thanks, okay. guys. Yeah, absolutely, Jason. Thank you again, and we will we'll be in contact, man. Thank you. Sure. Sounds good. There you go. Thank you so much, man. Woo, man, Oscar. Bro. Hey, great job with the interview, bro. Great, great, great job, yeah. man. That was uh, that was incredible, dude. I don't know how to I don't know how to come down like slow from something like this, man. Because I'm I'm on such a, I'm on such a high. I don't uh, I'm scared I'm just crash and burn, you know. <laughs> It, it, I'm going to be honest with you guys watching right now. It can't get better than that for the rest of the show, but we will continue. We're going to talk about one of the best new comic book days of this year. But, dude, I dude, that was incredible. I can't wait to – my brain is trying to process everything that, that Jason yeah. said today. 
Um, I, I'm gonna go back and watch this one a couple of times and just yeah. just geek out on it and listen to him because I, I, as many people in the chat, uh, I think Poser said it earlier, just jaw dropped, right? Like, yeah. um, it's it's hard. It, it, it's it, it's hard to stay focused when you have somebody like Jason. It's it just you know, just talking, dude. And, and and for us, like we're we're just like everybody else, just comic fans. We love comic books. Again, I mean, thank you so much, man, yeah. Jason. Chris, Chris. yeah. Yeah. Give me in my eyes. Can you believe it, bro? Can you believe we just had Jason, Sean, Alexander on the show? I mean, bro, no. come on. We're just some regular guys that went to go pick up some comic books about a couple years ago, and, and, and we're getting to talk to some of the best people in the business, man. My God. Yeah. I, I just... You know, I mean, just for people that watch the show to get perspective, you know, like – Oscar and I aren't going to sit here and act like we're like, you know, like celebrities or anything like that. You know, we love what we do. We've grown tremendously. And that's that's due to the people watching this show. So big thank yeah. you to you guys. I text Oscar the other day and I said, uh, I said, Oscar, can you believe I was prepping for this interview? And I said, can you believe that in 2020 we will have interviewed Rodney Barnes and Jason Sean Alexander in the same year? Uh, and that, you know, Philadelphia, dude, like we, we've talked about it all year um, to have both these guys on this channel. It's it's amazing. And, and we nerd out um, and it's not to show off, guys. It's just, it's exciting. You And I hope that you guys feel like you're part of it. Um, it's freaking amazing. Yeah. Uh, that's all I can say. Do we have uh, something to take a quick break here? We, we do. It's about 45 to 50 seconds long. So if you got to run, can run. You take, can you take me off and then sure. I'll be back to you with Got you, brother. Go. <laughs> All right, guys. Hey, if uh, while we take this little break here, uh, you want to get up and stretch your legs, stretch your back, stretch your dancing bones. Uh, here, here's a little Batman dance break for you guys. Bat music. All right, guys. Hey, I hope you uh, got to dance it out a little bit, stretch, stretch yourself. Uh, I did not. So, uh, oh, come on, Adam. <laughs> I know you don't really like that Batman 66, but, uh, I mean, he's got some new dance moves, man. So, uh, <laughs> um, there you go. I think Chris is coming back now. And uh, I hope you guys are ready for the second half of the show. We're going to run through it real quick. Don't worry. We won't keep you around for another two, three hours. Uh, but uh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. What You're up, right. Chris? You Ooh, back? <laughs> Man, I'm telling you guys, uh, that was that was amazing, um, and it it's hard to get better than that. But we do yeah. have some, some new comics yeah. to talk. Huh? <laughs> it, let me run. Let me run the restroom real quick. Uh, TMI to everybody, but uh, you're gonna talk about the 800, the uh, the thing, right? The giveaway. Yes, I'm gonna okay. talk about that. I will tell them, and you do your thing, man. All right, guys. Everybody still watching, um, thank you guys so much for being here with us. We announced on Twitter, right, that we are going to be doing, when we hit 800 subs, we're going to do a giveaway, right? It's a lost mystery box. We're going to tell you how to do that right now. So pay attention, all right? So when this video is all wrapped up, you will be able to leave a comment in this video. This is the rules right here, guys. It's very easy, okay? Leave a comment in this video when it's done and just put on there, what is it that keeps you coming back and getting lost in comics with us every Thursday, right? What is it that keeps you coming back and getting lost in comics with us every Thursday here? And just leave that comment on this video. Again, after the video is done, or if you're doing the rewatch, just leave a comment on here and you will be entered for the mystery box for the 800 sub lost mystery box. Very simple. Leave that comment in the video. And we are going to pick somebody randomly from the people that comment on this video 
because we know that means you're watching the channel, you're watching the show, you're involved. And then we're going to give away that box. I do want to say this is going to be a great box. Uh, it's, a, it's a great box of free comics, right? You're not paying anything. We're, we're taking care of all that. We're paying the shipping. But I will say we are less than 200 subscribers from 1,000. And when that 1,000 hits, that's going to be the big giveaway. And we're going to blow your minds with the 1,000 giveaway. So this, this is a great box, the Lost Mystery Box. Leave the comment you know, in the video. But also prepare yourselves because the 1,000, the 1K giveaway, it's going to be big. We gave away a, a slab, right, at 500? Or was it 500? We gave yeah, a, a slab. We gave away uh, the um, Teen Titans. Uh, Titans 44? 44. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so if, if that, that's what we gave away on, on 500, just think about what we're going to give away on, on uh, the 1K subscriber. We've, giveaway. we've given away an Iron Man helmet that lights up and detaches. Uh, Ooh, yeah, we've done, uh, we've done uh, bags and boards. We've done those uh, those BCW black okay. uh, cases. We've done those. Yeah. Uh, but maybe for the one thousand, or maybe we'll give away some eight by tens of our handsome faces like this, like that, <laughs> to really to really make people some happy. People happy, you know, just give them an eight by ten. <laughs> like I say, <laughs> what, what did everybody think about the spawn drawings? What do you think about the spawn drawing? <laughs> can we show those one more time? Sure, we sure can. Uh, here we go. This is this is Chris's here. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and then this is this is mine here with the. Oh, so did you catch that did, on on mine, bro? Do you see the do you see the hand reaching for you right there? You see that? Oh, okay, okay, okay. I thought I thought it was like he had claws, like a Wolverine claw. Yeah. <laughs> see, like on the original, he has the the spikes on his hands. You see. Oh, um, okay, okay. But the, the, That's cool. I, did a, That's cool. I did a horrible job with the shading, bro. So I, I couldn't quite get it. I mean, that wasn't my only problem, but <laughs> it was part of it. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah so these are this, uh, this is a mine's uh, awesome drawings, <laughs> and we're, we're super excited about it. So, yeah. <laughs> we're open for commission, guys. Open for commission. Just let us know. We will yeah. draw you something. So. Here we go. We got a buyer already. Yeah. <laughs> um, there you go. Yeah. We will give you our PayPal information after this, and you send us the money. We will send you those drawings. <laughs> All right, guys. Let's, let's, move on. let's get the show. <laughs> uh, no, I said that if you, if you act now, you can get it for nineteen ninety nine. both of them. So. $19.99. That's not bad. All right. Let's get into some uh, – we're moving on here. Let's get into a power minute. How about that? Let's do it. Let's do that, right? Let's do that. Give me one second. Here you go. Ready? Go. Yeah. Power. All right. Are you ready? Power. Minute. And because oh. of the, uh, what's that? Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Because of the, uh, the, sh the, sh the interview today and getting the new comics, we're only going to do one book for Power Minute, and it's a good one. So you tell me one, and I will go. Oh, and for anybody that doesn't know, I don't know how, if, if, where you've been hiding under a rock. Power Minute is a uh, one-minute spoiler-free review of an upcoming comic book from next new comic book day. And this uh, this this uh, segment <laughs> is – I'm still thinking about Jason, bro. I'm sorry. What? This right, segment, sorry. It's hard to come down. <laughs> this segment is sponsored by AWA Upshot Studios, Scout Comics, and – Mad Cave Studios. You ready? Yes, sir. You ready? I'm ready. You ready? Got the timer? Let's do this. Are you, are you, you want the timer? You're going to get the timer. You ready? Let's go. I'm ready. Go. All right. Dry Foot, issue number three. We got writer Jared Lujan, artist Orlando Sacedo, colorist Warnia Sahedaua, I don't know, and letterer Justin Birch. In case you forgot, this story is based in the mid-1980s around a group of four teenagers who are planning on stealing from the biggest crime boss in town, but you know it's not going to be that easy. The story really picks up speed and comes to, head, to a head in issue three. Our group of teenage friends have some hard choices to make in a town where it seems the easiest choice is to join the local cartel and make an easy buck working in the crime trade. While all four of these friends have grown up together, that doesn't mean they are all headed in the same direction. Issue three takes an emotional twist and hits you really hard in the last few pages. 
when you were a teenager, did you ever betray a friend or a friend betray you? It really hurts. I read all three issues together and man, oh man, did I get the four kids walk into a bank vibes, but dry foot is different and unique in its own special way. Only one issue left and I can't wait to see how this ends. If you want to get lost in a great story and interchange your teenage self with the characters in this book, get lost in dry foot. I genuinely like this mad cave book a lot. Boom. Awesome. Good. It's really good. good. Good job. I read the three, when I read the three issues together, I was like, oh, it, it really came together. I was like, dude, this is a really good book. So that's, a, that's Dry Foot number three. Uh, get it, guys, if you like any of that. You know, what you just mentioned right now is probably one of my favorite things in comics, to read three issues at least all at once. Yeah. I don't know what it is about it, but it hits, it hits just right in all the right places. <laughs> So. It really does, man. Like I, I'm noticing that too, because you know, obviously we do the show, so we read. Uh, thank you, Adam. Tip of the hat, my friend. Tip of the hat. Um, you no. Know, um, but uh, reading reading issues like that in bulk, I, I do kind of miss that sometimes. And there's yeah. certain books that I, I am gonna go back and reread in bulk because it it truly is. Uh, you get such a bigger picture. I mean, it's like it's like binge watching a Netflix ep uh, a series, sure, sure. right? Rather than just watching yeah. you know one episode here, one episode there. You just sit there and you get to read them all. And that's that's amazing, dude. So, but without further ado, let's talk about New Comic Book Day. Let's let's new Comic Book Day. Let me, let me prepare here. Can I just say that this New Comic Book Day? As I was thinking about it, I was like, dude, this might be one of the best new comic book days uh, of 2020. Uh, really, dude, like everything that I read, I could have talked about every single book I read uh, yesterday. Uh, it was a very good new comic book day, so much so that it was hard to make a pick of the week this week, um, mm -hmm. but had to make a pick of the week. But I could have, any one of these books I feel like could have been a pick of the week last week because um, they're that good. But But I did make one pick. And I'm going to go ahead and go on with that. This is my pick of the week, guys. This is Stillwater, issue number three. Um, this is uh, by Chip Zdarsky, art by Ramon K. Perez, colors by Mike Spicer, and letters by Russ Wooten. So uh, this issue begins with a bang, right? Literally, our main character is attempting to make his way out of Stillwater, only to find himself met with gunshots as he gets close to the border of the town. But that's no problem because Daniel is death proof and just needs a little time to heal, right? Because that's the whole thing with Stillwater. You can't actually be killed, right? So Daniel has a lot of questions and, now, and by now has realized that there is more going on in, in Stillwater than just being void of death. Um, there's a jacked up chain of command in Stillwater and he's determined to get to the bottom of it. His journey leads him to the town doctor, who outright tells him that he cannot answer all his questions, but rather suggests that he make himself a home in Stillwater so that he can make the town folk more comfortable and hopefully learn the secrets behind this too-good-to-be-true little little town, right? Um, that's exact, exactly what Daniel does in this book. He attends a party in Stillwater. Um, the issue also leaves on a nice cliffhanger that will inevitably lead to a lot more threads to unravel. Um, Dude, I, I really love this book. I, I love the questions that arose from this issue. Uh, while not being able to be killed sounds like such a great thing. Uh, like when I hear that, I'm like, dude, that would be awesome, right? You can't ever be killed. You can't ever die. Um, but maybe it's not the greatest thing, right? When when so like some of these questions that arise in this issue, like maybe it's not great when food is actually not necessary for your body because you can't really you can't really indulge in it because you don't really need the nourishment because you're not gonna die if you don't eat. Uh, a simple drink has no effect on you, right? Uh, caffeine, alcohol. Uh, yeah. How about exactly? Uh, how about how about the cows that are continuously being tortured because people just go back and keep eating, picking the meat off their bones and their bodies because the cows are going to heal again, but that doesn't mean they don't feel the pain. So there's definitely a lot of uh, questions and a lot of effects that this town has on the people and the animals. Yeah. Um, the combination, uh, the art and the writing, they're, they're right on par from what you'd expect from Chip and Ramon. Um, you get all the small, small town vibes, plenty of mystery blended in with the beautiful use of colors in the book. Uh, my favorite moment was when the doctor, he's answering Daniel's questions, but he accidentally says a little too much about the judge in Stillwater. And then he quickly corrects himself, knowing that he said too much. 
it just really reveals how much is going on in the town besides the obvious. Uh, and there's a lesson to be learned in the series so far. And that lesson is just enjoy being alive every day. Embrace the pain and hurt that we all feel because we at least we feel all right. Um, so, again, I, I really love this series. It's not a great jumping on point because it's issue three that you want to start from issue one. But uh, we're not that far. So if you haven't pick up Stillwater, I think it's a great, great book. Did you read it? I, I have not. I haven't. Even, I've only picked up issue one when we went. I think it was a, a Twitter fan pick. And then I didn't pick it up after that. Uh, but uh, I, I probably will get it once once some of this stuff fall off. I'll go back and get back issues like I usually do. <laughs> so, uh, but I have to be disciplined. And keep my keep my. Uh, 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 hey, those covers have been pretty damn awesome, though. Uh, especially the cover of this yeah. this week. And last week too. I uh, I feel like the covers were freaking great, man. So, but yeah, I'll, I'll catch up to that sooner or later. So. Um, I yeah, I know Adam's getting on me. I, you know, <laughs> Adam's yeah. getting on me too. So, yeah. oh, I know. So, I'm gonna give Stillwater issue number three. Yes. For Jabron, I absolutely love that book. Four. Absolutely love that book. I really did. I love the series. Make you know again. Read it, guys. Read it. Check it out. All right, you're up. You're up, my friend. Well, my my book. Pick of the week is the recount by Scout Comics, writer Jonathan Hendrick, art by Gabriel Ibarra Nunez. Uh, this book, this book gives the political climate climate that they were in uh, some fresh air. I feel uh, what surprised me most was the no holds barred approach, approach to writing the story. Uh, I mean, the president. A little bit of a spoiler: uh, the president is assassinated on live TV, like within the first couple of pages. Uh, I'm going to read this. I'm going to read this part from, to you guys. I hope it's not too much of a spoiler, but for you to really get the feel of this book, I wanted to read, actually read out of the book. So I'll be, I'll be real quick. So uh, this is the guy that comes on TV and he's, he's against the government, right? And he says, by now you should understand how much we control. We are everywhere. Uh, President Christensen admitted to his war crimes and he was punished. Justice was served, right? But he says that was just the beginning, and then he goes on and on to talk about how he's gonna, he, they're gonna go after everybody associated with with this uh, administration, all the way down to the voters. Um, and and the key that I, the thing that I really liked is is in today's world we're all very private, right? We don't want to throw out our information out there, but we do so when it comes to like voter registration, right? And so they use the, he hints to using that to find people who voted for this criminal. And it's just, I, I love this book. Uh, uh, and, and uh, you know, so I, I get a little tongue-tied sometimes. But, uh, but anyway, let me, let me go back and find my place here in this thing. Uh, so, uh, so there's, there, there's uh, oh, my God, I'm losing my mind. See, Jason Chon Alexander, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to blame that. Now. <laughs> anyway, the art, I'd give a solid seven to. Uh, it, it, it does clearly express the violence and the voice of the writer throughout. Uh, and the perspectives they show, uh, characters drawn from. Uh, my favorite part of the book is when the masses uh, publicly publicly come out and tell uh, the nation their plans. It's a great jumping on point. Uh, if you like military type stories, uh, along with government secrets and and all that stuff, along with some good action, some good, some pretty good violence. Uh, and uh, you know, I enjoyed this book. I think when was it two weeks two weeks ago when we did the Power Minute on this, mm -hmm. I enjoyed it even more. Uh, I really, really enjoyed this book, man. So, did you did you read this book? I did, man, and it it blew my mind. Um, <clears throat> I, that, that's what my note says. The recount blew my mind. Uh, and I, it's like you said, dude. I, I know our country has been like politically charged recently, um, mm -hmm. but for someone who kind of detests politics and what politicians stand for, uh, this book had me at the jump, right? Like from page one. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, and it's uh, a president, right? He's he's stepping down before being impeached, but then he's replaced by this fiery, no nonsense uh, female president, and she refuses to be intimidated by anybody or by any terrorist group. Um, that is that is until like she and her uh, she's confronted by terror in her own ranks, right? Which happens later on in the book. Uh, she tries to bring the country together and then she's interrupted that whole thing that you read, right? She's interrupted yeah. by these terrorists that come over 
uh, the TV and give this message that like, exactly what you read out of the book. Um, I loved it, man. I love the issue. And in a way, it kind of like when I closed it, it kind of scared me just a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> it felt like like so believable, like as to where our country's at right now. But at the same time, I'm like, dang, that's a good book, man. It's a really good book. Um, and it, it kind of hit me, man. Yeah, it, it, that's, it's very true what you just said. That because in today's world, like, you never know what people are capable of. And, like, it is a very crazy, like, aspect or scenario. But I guess that's what I liked about it, that, that it could be. I mean, you never know. You know, people go all off, you know, nowadays. But, uh, you know, uh, I really did enjoy the book. I was very I was surprised by it. I love the military side of it, I guess. And uh, But I'm in. I'm in to see what happens, man. So, you know. Uh, What'd you give it? I gave it a single. Look at this. This is amazing. This is amazing. Five. <laughs> I, I, I agree. I agree. Five, man, so, yeah. I agree. You sent in your pick of the week first yesterday. If you hadn't picked that book, I would have picked the book. Um, but yeah. I did go with Stillwater, issue three. But a great book. I, 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 that's, a, that's from Scout Comics. And that's uh, some, sometimes that's... I love that we highlight these books and that we read these books because maybe people yeah. don't give a scout comic a chance sometimes or a mad cave studios book a chance, but there is some really good stuff out there. And, and the yeah. recount it was dude, that I was, it was great. It was a great, great issue. So great pick, man. What'd you have on uh what'd you have as a, as another honorable mention or something that really moved you? Was there anything else that was? Well, there's a lot. There's a lot, but uh, I'll try not to be. I'll try not to be too. You know, I'll, I'll do one. I'll let you do one, then I'll mention some others. Um, but I went back and forth on what my pick of the week was going to be because, like I said a moment ago, this was a great new comic book day. And some, you know, guy, everybody watching, you guys know how we go through these highs and lows of reading every week. And sometimes you got some mediocre books. Sometimes you have some, you know, half and half. But to me, like this was a very top heavy, uh, great comic book day. So my next up, the one I debated with was, I think this might be a surprise, was Catwoman 27 from uh, from DC Comics, yeah. written by Ram V, uh, Fernando Blanco on art. But it, it feels really great uh, to be reading a Catwoman book that I'm excited about every issue. Uh, and I have to say that that's a first time for me. While, while we've been collecting, there, there hasn't been a Catwoman solo book that, I, that I've been excited for ever. Uh, and I've read some stuff, but um, this one has me genuinely excited. Uh, with that said, you know everything you want from it. It's everything you want from a Catwoman book. She's she's smart, she's cunning, she's helping people, but she's doing it like in the Selena Kyle Catwoman way. Um, she's of course not your traditional hero, and she takes things a step too far at times. But that's that's what makes her special. Uh, I'm excited about the villain who makes his second appearance in this book. I like how he uh, quotes scripture before making a kill. Uh, he says, you know, he, he quotes the scripture out of the Bible, right? So that's, that's my guy, my kind of guy for sure. Um, he's dead set on being the one to take down Selena and no one else. Uh, I love that she's gotten back to her roots and that this book is completely free of anything else going on in the DC universe. Uh, it doesn't, and it, what, what I really like about it uh, is it doesn't feel like there's any agenda that's being shoved down my throat when I'm reading this, right? It, it just, it feels like a great story and a great action comic. And it's, re it's refreshing, right? Because all the, the books that we read that, that do have these agendas. Um, and I just want to say that Ram V, he's very quickly becoming a writer that I have to read. Like everything he's putting out, he's getting on that list for me. Like if I see his name, I'm going to read that book. Um, so this book, so much fun, Catwoman 27. Uh, did you get a chance to read it? I did. That was actually one of my books to mention as well. Uh... I really do. I mean, I'm enjoying this uh, this story a lot. It is. It's a. It's a lot of fun. I love to see like this other side of Catwoman as well, apart from Batman and all the other everybody else. Yeah. Uh, and and that villain man, like I don't know what it is about him. I, I, maybe it's the mystery. He, he's very. Uh, I can't remember the, his name. Uh, Jules, I guess from Pulp Fiction. You know when he he's about to kill somebody and he, he quotes a scripture. It's very hardcore. You know, it's very, it's very, uh, I don't know. I, I, I just love that. I love that he does that. I love that, that character. Uh, and uh, I hope to see more of him, you know, I hope that it doesn't just end just like that. But yeah, I agree. The writing is top notch, man. Uh, um, along with the art. So yeah, that's an, that was another good book, man, this week that I was very, very happy to, to get, man. So. Awesome. So, yeah. um, uh, 
Go ahead. Next, next uh, for you. Next for me, I think this is the one that you might also have was uh, Batman 103. Uh, this yeah. one was really good as well. Uh, I love I love that Ghostmaker man. I, I really like that character a lot. I like the I can't help but feel like he's right about the things he's saying and accusing Batman of. Right? It's kind of hard to you, you you know who Batman is. You know what he stands for. But the things he's getting accused of, like you can't help but shake your head and be like, well, yeah, he's kind of right. You know what I mean? But uh, there's a part of me that would love to see a Batman that's more Punisher. You know, he kind of kills, but then that would change Batman. You know, so. I like the dynamic. It makes me think. It makes me wonder. It makes me think beyond the comic book, which I love. And that character, man, I, I really do enjoy him as well. Uh, that he that he is calling himself a hero, but he's like a Punisher type, which I really, really like. So the writing is very, very good, man. The art, awesome. Um, so yeah, that that's that was kind of my and uh there's always something about seeing Batman get whooped great. Right? Like there's just something about that man that it plays with my head, I guess you know. But uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I I didn't think you would, man. But uh, what did you think? Did you read that? You read it, right? I, I loved it, and and again, this all these books that we mentioned so far could be a pick of the week. You know, Catwoman, ba Batman one hundred three, right? Um, James Tiny in the fourth, and he's just doing such a great job. Um, and and before this, I mean, I could care less who the heck Ghostmaker was until now. Um, this is a brand new character, but this issue does an incredibly great job of uh, building up the history and the mythos of Ghostmaker and his past relationship with Bruce as they were young adults uh, training with each other. Um, and there's a big, like, I love the, how the book really explores, like, the differences between Batman, uh, Bruce, and, and Ghostmaker. It's just kind of like what you said, like, Ghostmaker's got this Punisher type style. And of course, Batman is all about justice and he's not going to kill anybody. Uh, and that's something that, that uh, like there's a, the glaring difference, right, is that Bruce has emotion and feelings, and that's kind of how he lives his life. And, and it's something that we see. Uh, we don't see him often show that emotion, but it's there, and it obviously has carried him um, through the history of Batman. But uh, Ghostmaker, he's, he's quick to point out that, that Batman's falling short in, in, in many areas of cleaning up Gotham City because he's never able to take that uh, to make the tough choices and to maybe pull the trigger or, you know, eliminate somebody. So I love that aspect of the book. Um, I love how Batman sticks up for Clown Hunter. Uh, the fact that Clown Hunter is a kid and he also sees himself in Clown Hunter because he, he, Clown Hunter is only 17 years old and he lost his parents. Of course, Bruce lost his parents. So there's just a lot going on that, that I really, really enjoy about this book. Um, the way they, they, that both of them handle crime and, and it's kind of showing maybe some weakness in Batman and how he handles things. But uh, I'm just so curious where we go with the cliffhanger um, that it left us with and the title of the next story. So I, I really love this arc. I'm really loving Batman right now. Yeah, Adam, Adam, I think Adam put that too. He says that, that he loved the moment when Batman schooled Ghostmaker. Like he's I already on you, all that stuff. You know what I mean? I was already yeah. following that person. You don't know. And I, I did like that. I was like, yeah, get him, you know, because this guy thinks he's, I guess he's very, I think that character is a great character, but I think he's also very, like, small visioned. You know what I mean? Like, he only kind of sees what's in front of him. And Batman is, like, looking out to, like, next month. You know what I mean? So. Um, yeah. Hey, Ghostmaker makes this whole list of things that he, he's like, yeah, I fixed all these things in 12 hours in Gotham. But Batman's playing the long game, right? Like, he knows everything that's going on in his city. And he's got, you know, he's handling it. And he's going to handle it on a much larger scale where Ghostmaker is just focused yeah. on, oh, let me get this one killer. Uh, Batman's like, no, I, I've got this. And, I, and he does. He schools him. So um, I want to can I mention, do you have another one to mention? No, no. I was just uh, showing Robbie. Robbie's picks this week were Sea of Sorrows, Black Magic, Die. Moonshine. Ooh. We're going to talk about we're going to talk about one of those for sure. Yeah. And um, did uh, did you read Dead Day? Issue five? Uh, Dead day. Yes, I did. Yeah, I did. That was another. That was another good book, man. That. So this is the thing. I I I like that book. I feel like the way it ended, though. I feel like, you know, maybe they could have done another issue too before ending that arc. I feel. I feel like that last issue, because that dude's a badass, right? I mean, he's supposed to like, and then he just kind of gives up at the end. I don't know. I I did like it though. I I think it was a great great arc. I want to go back and read it all again. So I can't wait to do that as well. So. I mean, he what did is, you think? Yeah, I mean, he he is, but like at the same time, like 
what he's facing and that issue being surrounded and he's dead already. Like I, I, I think it shows that he kind of evolved even in death, you know, <laughs> like, um, but yeah, I mean, Ryan Parrott, man, just an incredible writer, an incredible co uh, conclusion to that arc. I'm hoping that this is not the end of dead day. I mean, you can explore so many areas of this dead day, the dead day, right? Like you could do so many stories from different perspectives um, different events get just it's such a great world a great universe that ryan built uh it's definitely was one of my favorite titles this year so i'm, I'm hoping there's a second volume but yeah. uh can, oh, go ahead. no i was gonna say to, to back you up i, I really think we got to push i know there, i know robbie and and and, and uh nora are in the chat and they're gonna get the the, the trade right. right that's the big thing i think we got to get the trade mm -hmm. you know <laughs> Uh, get the trade and really support him. You know what I mean. So that way, that next arc comes out, man. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, I, I don't know if people, if if for some reason you haven't read Dead Day, it's basically this. It's like one day a year, the dead come to life, and the consequences that follow that are enormous, right, to say the least. But the dead come to life. Such a great read. Uh, it's just a pleasure to read something new and exciting that we hadn't seen before. So I strongly recommend that book. Hey, if if we were on the phone, we'd be talking like this. So I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you, when you're reading Dead Day, right? And you see, uh, I can't remember the character's name, the guy with the helmet, right? He's he's in the house and he puts his hands on 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 his on his ex, right? He's like holding her from the waist and they're talking. Come on, what's that dude doing standing and looking at him? You know, like not doing nothing. But I would have been like, uh, you gotta go. The yeah, yeah, the husband. Man. He just like watches him. I'm like, come on, beat his ass that's or something. The, that's the one thing about the book. I was like. I was like, okay, like, that's a little, that's like, come on, dude. Like, I would have been like, you know what? I, I understand your perspective. Like, go ahead. Like, I know you're about to kill yourself. You know, you're about to burn yourself. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, let go of my wife. Like, get, yeah, get out exactly. of here. It's time for you to go. It's time for you to go. So, um, but, yeah, dude, great, great issue, man. Um, yeah. I got, can I mention a couple more? Yeah, go for it. All right, so... Uh, Something's Killing the Children, issue 12. Of course, another James Tiny in the fourth book. This was my favorite issue of the series. Um, and on another week, it could have been my pick of the week. It was a great, great issue. Uh, we got answers to question, questions in regards to the mysterious monsters that we've been seeing in the previous 11 issues. And we almost got, to, got the answer to how a monster is created before the order of St. James or St. George stepped in. Uh, I really can't wait for issue 13. Uh, did, did you read uh, Something's Killing the Children? I'm too behind. I'm, I've been trying to catch up. I'm a little bit behind. I'm too behind. So, uh, That's a good issue. I'm getting, I'm getting there. So Put it put it on the list. It's a good one, man. This one is really – it really stepped up and really uh, – it's been kind of a slow series, uh, a slow burn. It's a great series, but a slow burn nonetheless. And this yeah. issue really – some things happen where you're like, okay, cool, man, like – you need one of these issues every now and then to really just get you get you into the series. But um, speaking of you know monsters and series, um, people of Grendel, Kentucky, are fed up with a monster hiding in the cave and ready to deal with it once and for all. I love uh, another fantastic AWA series and one that right. you guys should be reading. Grendel is amazing. Uh, I'm gonna pick up the dead. What, what did uh, Wes say? I'm gonna pick up the Dead Day trade because uh, Robbie always talking about it. <laughs> yeah, I agree, Wes. I mean, dude, I I can't say enough about it. Every time it's come out, we've talked about it. You should be here with us, Wes, watching because we talk about it. But yeah, Robbie, he's been onto it. Um, it's great, dude. It's an amazing, amazing uh, series. So, but Grendel, Kentucky, dude, great series, another great series, um, and another monster book, right? It's not your like traditional monster book. Nah, bro, that, that ending, uh, I, I don't want to spoil it, man, but that ending between us, man, uh, I was like, what the heck, man? I go, <laughs> it's just so crazy, to, to that story. I feel like, I hope that one has another arc as well, um, but, man, that was, that was another good story. Yeah. So, that one is really good. Um, did you have any other books you wanted to mention? No, nah, nah, that was it for me, man. I was, I, was, uh, I was done. I was a little, my disappointment of the week was the, uh, so my, my local comic shop, uh, threw in, I guess, because of the Venom that I get. Okay. Uh, I was a little disappointed with Venom again. Uh, I just feel like it's not, like, the King in Black is coming, right? It's supposed to be a big arc that's coming in about four weeks. Yeah. I feel like 
Venom from here to there, there's like one issue in between, like a one shot for that. I just feel like they ended this arc, but I I, I don't know. I just feel like it's not hitting where it should for a big arc coming. Yeah. Um, so, you know, that was kind of my semi disappointment of the week. And not that it was horrible, but again, I'm just, I'm trying to find a reason to keep it on my sub when I can go put, you know, uh, the other books. That, yeah. The, you know, the, the recount, the, your book of the week. You know what I mean? Like those are books I want to read, uh, yeah. but there's a part of me that's just, it's so hard to let some of these other books go, which I hate. I hate that about myself, but, uh, mm -hmm. But yeah, I, See, let, Robbie, I, let yeah. Go. I let Venom go a long time ago, dude. Because yeah, I'm just, oh, yeah, I let it go a long time. Ago. I, I I wasn't feeling it, dude. If I don't feel the book, I'm not. I have gotten to a place where I can get past the hype on it, and I and Venom is one of those books. It's hard to let go because of the hype, dude. So, um, yeah. so oh, dude, how did I? How did I not? Uh, talk about this, dude. Thank you for reminding me, uh, Adam. I thought I was gonna get a break, but thanks to you two guys for getting it, man. Thank you, <laughs> Adam and fan, dude. Bad Mother from AWA Studios, issue number four. Krista Faust writing and Mike Diodato Jr. on art. Uh, I talked about it on last week's Power Minute, but issue four really heated up, man. Um, and this series, this is another series that's about to conclude with issue five. And I cannot wait, dude. Uh, the evolution that we've seen Bad Mother make from issue one to issue four, it's, it's been incredibly fun to see that play out. And I can't wait to see how she finishes off things. Uh, Mike Diodato Jr., dude, like we had him on the show a, a couple months ago, but he has done an amazing job of art on, that, on Bad Mother. Um, but issue four, he just really drove it home. There's several pages toward the end of the book that just, they just tell a story on their own. He's, it's like this long action sequence. And it's just no dialogue. And Mike just knocked it out of the park with the arts. Uh, it's an incredible, incredible book. Um, she, like I said, that evolution from this this woman that didn't nobody wanted to hear or, or uh, listen to, um, to see what she's doing and the plans that she's making. And again, the question that, that always, uh, that has come from this whole series, like what would you do for your own children, right? Like how, what, how far would you go? Uh, and I love that about this book. Um, it's a, it's a great, great story. And one issue left. Uh, again, if you're not reading this for some weird reason, uh, <laughs> if you're like Oscar and you have not made the, the commitment to Bad Mother, you know, I don't know, man. I don't know what you're thinking. I know, I know. I'm sorry. I, I did. I, you know, I I had a disappointment of the week. Um, so of all the great books I read last night, great, great, great new I'm comic anxious. book. I'm anxious. Let's hear it. This is uh, this is Nightwing seventy six, right? Um, no way. Yeah, this was a disappointment oh. for me. I love and I love. I wanted to show this because I love the B cover to this issue. I mean, yeah. I love loved. Uh, I love this cover. I don't know if you looked at if you looked up close at the cover, but there's like people wearing masks in the uh, in the background. And then uh, part of it says um, COVID free or something back here. It says like it talks about COVID on the back. Up on the, up on, I don't know if you can see it, but uh, right up here, it mentions COVID. And then you got people wearing masks. It's a mask in the crowd. It's a really cool cover. Yeah, I got the other cover. I didn't see that one. So, yeah. Okay. This is a B cover on it. Um, so, it was not disappointed. I wasn't disappointed with the cover. I loved it, but um, we have really, I have really stuck it through with Nightwing, right? And this whole uh, Dick to Rick Grayson saga, but using it once again in this issue to ultimately accomplish what? Like for like Dick Grayson, you know, spoiler alert in case you are, not, are reading Nightwing, spoiler <laughs> alert, but um he breaks up with with Bea, right, or or Bea, whatever her name is. Uh, I felt like that's what the whole issue was about. Let's 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 rehash this whole thing so that he can break up with Bea, and it's 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 just time to move on. It's it's time for a fresh Nightwing story, a new arc. And I feel like like DC is telling Dan Jurgens, like, hey Dan, like things are about to change in 20, 2021 for DC. Like just hang on a little bit longer, like with this Nightwing story. Uh, and I, I feel like that's that's kind of what's happening here. But I just I just want another arc, and I, I love Nightwing. 
Um, so I, I, this is the one book that, again, it felt like I'm reading the same stuff again. Uh, that kind of disappointed me. So this is my fear, okay? I we I was on Nightwing in the very beginning, at re, beginning of Rebirth, was on, dropped off at about 25, I think, or 30. Yeah. And then jumped back on again when you told me that something bad happened to him. And I was like, oh, crap, I, I missed it. So I went back and got on. Got on at 50. I loved it. I mean, I really did like the story. And then around, you know, I don't know, about 10 issues in, I started to think, I'm, wait, I'm ready for more. You know what I mean? And I was thinking about dropping it. Which I never did, but stayed on. Yeah. Now this this particular story you're talking about, it did finish, and I liked it, but I did have that feeling of like, well, what now? Like, yeah. what what's he gonna do now? You know what I mean? And and it scares me to think like, I mean, I guess I could make room for other comics that are, that I, that will, I will enjoy a lot, I guess. But it scares me because I don't want to drop I don't want to drop Nightwing because I like Nightwing, but yeah. I'm not looking for another another Batman or Red Hood story. You know what I mean? So. I don't know, man. I, I may want to drop it if it's not very good after this, I guess, you know, now that he's back. I'm not, I'm not even thinking about dropping it. I, I like I like the story. I like the book enough. It's just the matter, the, the fact that I just want a new arc. Like, the writing's been good to me. It's just been played out so much. Um, so I, I haven't got to that point yet where I'm thinking about dropping it. But, dude, I almost laughed at the last page of this. Uh, it's like... Like he breaks up with ba with Bea, right? And he has this little moment of reflection. He sheds a tear, which is cool. You know, I get it. He sheds the tear right there. And then he's like, all right, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how the book ends, dude. I'm like, what? I'm like, it's like, uh, break up, shed a tear. And then he's like, let's go. <laughs> yeah, he's like, he's like, let's go. There's tons of women in this in this city, man. That's what I, that's what I imagine him doing. He's jumping out. It's like... <laughs> Catch me, ladies. You know what I mean. He's, he's just <laughs> it's just funny, dude. I, I laughed at the last page. I was like, "What the?" Heck? I was like, "It's time for a new arc, guys. It's time for a new arc." So, you know, Adam, but, Adam, and and, and uh, Robbie talking about DC. You know, not not uh, doing that well. You know what I what I I really feel is not doing well is Marvel. Man, like oh. I don't think I get, I don't think I get hardly anything. I think Venom is the only thing. I drop Thor. I don't get Wolverine. I don't. I can't think of anything else I get except for maybe Venom right now, and I'm on the verge of dropping that. So Daredevil. Uh, oh, Daredevil! I still get Daredevil. Yes, yes. Daredevil's Correct. great. Thank you for correcting me. Yeah, I forgot about. You know why I forgot about that though? Because I still haven't got my damn issue from like three weeks ago. <laughs> I'm still looking for. Him. I'm still looking for a freaking uh, Daredevil with the uh, Alex cover, Alex Ross cover, man. So yeah, but, uh, yeah. But yeah man, so. <laughs> totally agree. We talk about it all the time, but yeah, Marvel has really stunk it up this year. Um, DC, I think it's 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 kind of hit or miss. Um, the event, the death metal, is there's some fatigue there going on with fans. Um, but yeah, we'll we'll see what happens. There's a whole new direction that's coming here in January, um, so we'll we'll see what happens. But I'm trying trying to be optimistic, and there is a lot of good stuff happening in DC still. Or I can't say that about Marvel. So, all right, man, let's get into it. Uh, you guys made this pick, so let's get into the uh, Lost in Comics family. Pick of the week. So this week, you guys picked the book here. We put a poll out for uh, Sea of Sorrows, Frank at Home on the Farm, Assassin and Son, and the Recount. Uh, man. That was it was pretty close for a while, right? And then I, I guess after a while, Sea of Sorrows uh, kind of blew it out, right? Mm -hmm. um, so Sea of Sorrows, man. I so after I read the story, I looked back at this cover, and I really, really love this cover. Like I, it kind of went under the radar for me. I didn't know much about it, uh, so I was a clean slate going in, right? Or oh, before I jump ahead, a uh, writer is a uh, Rich Do Doick, uh, art by Alex Cormack. And, uh, of course, it's an IDW uh, comic book. Uh, but like I was saying, I was a clean slate going in. I didn't know what to expect, uh, really. But I ended up enjoying this book. Uh, so the story starts out in, in the Atlantic Sea in 1926. Uh, you got a group of people who are out treasure hunting. Uh, basic enough, right? But what you get, uh, but what you get in the depth uh, of the Dark Abyss, right? That's what, kind of what the story is about. Uh, nightmares, right, Come, coming true or wrongs come back to get you. I don't know, man. 
I'm not sure yet, but what, what surprised me most was the vision of a mermaid, right? Or like uh, in the words of uh, Zoolander, a merman. <laughs> but um, merman. <laughs> or something like a mermaid right in the depths of the dark, yeah. which kind of would freak me out, man. If I was, at, if I was down there and I saw something, I'd be like, uh, I'm out, man. Uh, the story is definitely plot driven. And even though the art, uh, when it comes to the details of the face, aren't the best, uh, the art stands out in making you feel like you are in the scene. Uh, in, in flashbacks, uh, the art really takes you back with movie quality transitions, which is also my favorite part of the book. Uh, it's a great jumping on point, and I'd like to add this to my sub list as well. Uh, I have to find a way to make some room, so I, I think I will be jump, drop, dropping off some other stuff. Uh, but uh, like I said, man, it, it's it's a great book. Um, and going back, you know, after reading it, you know what I mean, going back and looking at this art, so this is what I was talking about right here, like the face of this girl at the very top. Like, it's not very good. You know, when I first saw it, I was like, mm, it kind of looked like a Joker type chick. You know, <laughs> you know what I mean? But uh, but then as you read on, like this, yeah. this very bottom panel right here, like the looking at the rope going into the water, like that perspective of art, I feel like saved the book, I feel, in my opinion, you know? Uh, mm -hmm. I really, really enjoyed it, man. Uh, uh, very surprised. It gave me the creepy feels, which I loved. Um, but yeah, man. Uh, uh, so, what did you, what did you think of the book? Man, I I really liked it, and and just to kind of like give a little bit, not too much away, but you know, the book is set in 1926. Um, the Flemish Cap, which is a salvage boat, it sits 350 miles from shore. Um, this crew of misfits are looking for a lost U-boat that supposedly sank during World War II. And in this boat lies a pillage of gold, right, to satisfy many, many a seaman's wildest dreams, right? It's supposed to be all this, all this gold, right? Uh, and dude, I, exactly what you said. This, this book, it really surprised me. It caught me off guard because I, I didn't really know a lot about it, and I went into it with, with no yeah. expectations. Uh, I had read the synopsis when we did the uh, the fan pick of the week poll, but I was not expecting to enjoy this book as much as I did. Uh, and the, and again, the, you mentioned it, but the art in this book, I thought was spectacular. All those scenes that you're talking about, but also um, the faces that you mentioned, like with the woman's face, like you see that at the beginning, you think, oh, it's kind of silly. But then as you read on and you kind of see what the type of character she is, and then it makes sense. Like, oh, she is kind of like, she's kind of crazy, you know, like and you kind of, I don't know about her, you know, like I'm on the, like, she's, yeah. she's got some weird stuff going on, but um it was like a very dark ocean horror vibe with a ton of mystery and, and, uh, and, and there's treasure to be had, right? Treasure. Ooh. But uh, yeah, I, I really, I think the characters and, and setting, they really like really shone through in this book. Um, and it looks like the crew at any moment could turn on each other at the yeah. same time. They have to work together to discover yeah. this treasure under the ocean uh, and the ocean itself, right? It sets like this very dark, unforgiving setting for the story. I mean, you're in the middle of the ocean and that leaves little room for error or mistake on any character's part. Because, I mean, if you do something wrong in the middle of the ocean, you might be murdered by a crew member. You might be tossed overboard. You might be eaten by sharks, drowned, or maybe even something more horrific to involving a mermaid, right? Like you said. Um, but this book, it, it got my attention with issue one. It feels like you're on a sea adventure with these characters, but also like you're in the middle of an X-Files episode based in the ocean. Uh, just very, very well put together. And I, and I want to mention Justin Birch on the letters. Uh, we see him a lot uh, on Mad Cave books, but he's doing IDW uh, work here. But I, I was noticing like he's very good at like the little sound effects. He's writing those little sound effects in, and it's it's really cool. Uh, really, really like this book. And like you said, great jumping on point issue yeah. one. I, I really, I really love the the use of the colors, especially like black. Like yeah. black is a hard color to use, but they use it perfectly in this book, man. Like. And that's what I loved about it. You know, my favorite panel is when the guy shoots the flare or the girl shoots the flare and it, it lights the sky red in the dark, but then it yeah. goes to a flashback. That part, bro, it just it seemed like a movie. Like that was movie quality art in, in just a page. Yeah. So uh, I think that's what really got me the most. Uh, I'm very I'm very curious about the story, especially if it's a horror book. I, I love horror books. Uh, yeah. But the art, man, is really what sold it, what sold it for me. So, yeah, I... I uh, mm -hmm. I was very excited, man. I, I always like when we both like the book a lot too. I, I love I, it. I just I love the look of it. Bro. I love I love it. It's like I, I again, it's like I don't I don't read a whole lot of IDW, 
Um, but this book, dude, I was like, this I'm sold, and I, I'm it's going on the list. I mean, it's creepy. Like I didn't see this at the store. That's no, that's another reason. When I I picked it up, I just grabbed it and put it in my stack, and I took off, you mm -hmm. know. And I kind of just gave it a glance. But when I got here, after I read it, I closed it, and I look at the cover, and I'm like, oh my Beautiful. god, that's so creepy and good, man. Like seeing the the face barely, you know, yeah. the girl or the 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 mermaid or siren or siren, whatever you want to call it, and then the guy like trying to escape, you know, like. I don't know. I, I'm excited, man. So, uh, but yeah. So, what did you, uh, what did you rate? Maybe we rated it the same. What did you rate it? I gave it a five. Well, you give it a five. We'll play that. We'll play it. Look at this. This is amazing. This is amazing. Five. Yeah, I give it a four. Should I play it or? Yeah. Four? This, you know, huh? I absolutely love that book. Four. But that's a pretty good rating for a, a Twitter fan pick, you know. So, yes. but uh, I was again, I was really surprised, and 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 even on a great new comic book day to give that book a five, I just thought it was so well done, dude. Like so, yeah. like there was nothing wrong with it. It got my attention, uh, and it's really, really good. So, there you have it, guys. Lost in Comics family pick of the week. Great pick guys. And and the recount was great too. That was on the poll. So, you know, just, just a great all around new comic book day, a great uh, day to get lost in comics. So great day. I just want to say again, just to remind everybody in case you came in late, uh, we are giving away our lost mystery box for our 800 subscriber giveaway. And all you have to do at the end of this video, when it's all said and done, or if you're watching this on the replay, Leave a comment in the video just saying what keeps you coming back every Thursday to get lost in comics with us. Leave that in the in the comment of this uh, video and you will be entered into the Lost Mystery Box giveaway. Boom. Yes, sir. And Make sure you uh, tell your friends and your family and like and subscribe to help us get because we're officially on the road, right? To We're on the back end of trying to get that 1,000 sub mark, right? Yeah, so, yeah, less than 200 away, man. Less than 200 away. We're on the road. And, again, that's going to be a huge giveaway when we do it. But uh, it's been – it's just – we're having such a great time, guys. Like like Oscar said, just keep uh, keep telling people about it. And we're going to keep spreading the love, keep getting awesome creators on. Like we had Jason on earlier. Dude, that was just – I can't wait to go rewatch that interview uh, with Jason that we had. Twelve ongoing projects at the moment, Robbie. Dude. Robbie, back on so you can talk about this stuff. <laughs> that boy is that boy is working, man, and he's and he's putting out good stuff. So if you haven't, make sure you follow, uh, make sure you follow him on Twitter, uh, so that way you can see what he's doing. But uh, all right, it's time. We're getting to the end of the show. What are we looking forward to next week in our bottom of the stack? So you want me to start? You want to start? Yeah, go for it. All right. Go. These are the books that I am personally looking forward to reading the most next week. And I'm going to start off because I am this close to being caught up in this series. And I will be caught up, making a commitment right now. I'll be caught up by next week. But Spawn yeah. issue number 312. I'm only a few issues away. Looking forward to this read. And look at that beautiful cover. And we talked about it a lot with Jason. But, uh, yeah, I've been, I've been really excited about Spawn lately. So I cannot wait for issue 312 here. I, I'm I'm also on the road to try to catch up as well, so we can talk about it. Is that uh, the scumbag on the cover there with the? <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> it's not. It, but it, scumbag issue number two is a book that I am looking forward to next week. Also, scumbag issue number uh, two by Rick Remender. That was an awesome first issue we read, and there you go. Number two is coming out next week. Next up, we got Department of Truth number three. Another James Tinian book. Yeah, you know, like James Tinian, dude, just writing so much. Um, Stargazer, issue number three, a Mad Cave Studios book. And this is another book, dude, that uh, it's just, it's really, it's really uh, exceeded my expectations. Um, I've known some people that watch our show that are getting into it now. You don't have that one? Oh, man. I guess, hold on. Give me one second. I'll pull it up. That's okay. So Stargazer number three, guys, that's another book. If you are an X-Files fan or a fan of like uh, kind of mystery um, type of uh, alien abduction, conspiracy, it's got a lot going on, but a great, very great book. Um, and that's, that's an awesome book. And that, um, 
That is written by, uh, who, what's his name? Anthony Cleveland. He was on the Burrito Show the other day, and that was really fun listening to him. I went back and listened to that interview. So shout out to the Burritos for having that interview. Stargazer number three. I'll move on here. Um, Philadelphia issue number 10. Uh, we talked about it with, uh, with Jason, dude. My, I think maybe the best series of 2020. We got issue number 10, and you heard what he said. This, this stuff is just on the uphill climb, right? He said from here to issue 12, it's going to get crazy. And now I'm going to be looking out for those homage, uh, all those little homage moments in the book uh, that he mentioned. So those oh, are the yeah. books that I'm most looking forward to next week. Uh, man, those are some, those are some great books. Uh, I as well have, for the covers, uh, Spawn uh, 312. Ooh. It's cover C. Uh, again, it's the Gunslinger Spawn uh, cover C there. Um, I have the uh, Dark Knights Metal, the Multiverse, uh, Who Laugh, number one. It's, this is a one in 25. I'm probably only picking this up. I've been kind of broke lately with the uh, freaking quarantining and not being able to work, but uh, I still want to show this cover off. It's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> uh, then we got the Ice Cream Man, uh, issue 20. This is going to be a 2020 foil variant. The fourth uh, printing? Yeah, it's like the fourth printing of the of the Dr. Seuss books, man. So yeah. uh, they're going to keep it going to like, you know, 10 printings, 15 printings, I guess, you know. If people keep buying them, they're yeah. beautiful covers. So. That's very true, man. So, and then last but not least, uh, I like this cover from the, uh, I don't know why it won't show. It's the scumbag. It's showing. It? Oh, okay. It's not showing on my end. So I, anyway, it's showing. So I, uh, this is a uh, scumbag cover B. Uh, from uh, Scalera, uh, I kind of love. I like this cover. It's very like James Bond <laughs> looking. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's kind of cool. But uh, yeah, those are my mm -hmm. five books for the week to look for next week. So, and it looks like it's going to be another really good new comic book day. Just by the books that we mentioned right now, and there's more other uh, books that are coming out next week. I think we're about to have another great new comic book day. Uh, and next week is. I forgot to we forgot to tell everybody this, but next week is Thanksgiving week, guys. So we will actually not be live next week, but we will be preparing a video uh, that we will release next week because we cannot we're not going to go a week without giving you guys great content. But we want you guys to definitely enjoy your Thanksgiving with friends and family, whatever you might be doing. Uh, of course, we will be on Twitter, Instagram. We'll, we'll be chatting with you guys, but we will have a special video next week. It'll be a little shorter, so it'll be something you can just go watch. Uh, for Thanksgiving next week, and we cannot wait to show that to you. Yep. You said it best. <laughs> well, you said it best. Man. But, yeah, man. Uh, guys, make sure you like the video right now if you haven't. We're just telling that like 20 times. Like the video if you haven't. Like uh, subscribe to the channel. Uh, we're bringing in. We we have a couple of more interviews scheduled uh, coming up for the next couple of months that I we, I can't wait to tell you guys about also, um, and that's gonna be exciting. So make sure I'll ditch my family for you guys, dude. That's, that's beautiful, Adam. That's beautiful. That's awesome. But uh, <laughs> make sure you subscribe to the channel. Tell all your friends, family about Lost in Comics so that they can get lost with us. Also, been another great show. This was issue fifty one of Lost in Comics. Whew, great Before show. We take off before we take off, guys, we like to end the show with a little social lights uh, stuff from you guys. Again, if you're going to post something funny or just something comic related or just whatever and you want us to see it, tag us in it, uh, you know, whatever, so we can play it at the end of our show. Uh, we like to play a little, you know, memes and some of that uh, to support you guys as well. So don't forget about that, guys. Uh, don't forget to tag us so we know what's up. And, uh, you know, that's it, man. If we don't see y'all next week, uh, y'all have a great holiday and uh, stay safe. Stay safe. Hashtag stay lost in comics. Peace stay out, guys. Peace.